Hey, what's happening to Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast? I may have buried the needle there. Yeah, I just started to record this and it was at uh, 30%, and now I have to put it to 70%, and this might be loud. I'll have to adjust it later with a compressor and possibly even a normalizer. I do that every week. You know why? Because I produce this fucking show in addition to talking on this goddamn show. Good Lord, what's wrong with me? There's a fan on over my head because I just got out of the shower and it is warm in my house and I'm sticky and I have to put on a shirt because I'm about to call a lift because why? I'm about to go to the airport. What's that? Yes, I am. I'm recording this Wednesday morning at 5.09 a.m. California time and I got a 7 o'clock flight out of Burbank heading off to, uh, why am I giving all this information? Here's my social security number. Enjoy that. Uh, But I wanted to leave this. It's a special bulletin for you just because I don't want you to think I left you guys or forgot you guys or I'm back in the uh, the non-recording thing. Uh, But I'm going to be in Chicago until Saturday night. Uh, I get back here late Saturday night. So the new podcast will come out either Sunday or Monday, probably Monday morning. But uh, it depends on how I feel getting off the plane, because I don't know if you've heard about this. There's a germ. Uh, and there'll be a mask on my face for a couple of hours, maybe five hours. And uh, and that could fry your vocal cords. I don't know. I'm not a fucking doctor. What the fuck do I know? Uh, or it could, you know what? I could sound better than I've ever sounded in my life, in which case, oh my God, then I'll bust out a show that you'll listen to and go, holy shit, this guy should be sick all the time. Or masked. I should wear a mask when I do the show, probably. That'd be a good idea. Everybody, you know what? Because I don't know what I'm putting in your ears. Is there Are there germs in your ears? There could be germs in your ears. So here's the deal. I'm going to record this little opening part and tell you, uh, well, let's talk about this real quick. I'll tell you about the new paranoid strain. I'll tell you this real fast. Uh, I'll talk about it on the, on the real podcast as well. But the new, I, I've listened to the new one because the new one's out. So why not plug the shit out of it, right? The new paranoid strain, Secret Societies, episode 14. God damn it. Put a couple of touchdowns on the board there. He did. Uh, it's the 14th gibbon in the endless chain that you pull out of the barrel of monkeys, <laughs> the, bar- the barrel of secret society monkeys. Uh, and so please enjoy it. It's about Rosicrucians. It's about Count St. Germain. Now, I'm going to tell you this again. I don't want to go into full detail. I'm just going to tell you right now that uh, our great friend Fearful Jesuit hosts the Paranoid Strain podcast. It's available wherever fine podcasts are get, getting, gotten, gotten, obtained. Uh, so you're going to want to go check out the Apple podcast space, the iTunes store, Spotify, perhaps, uh, Jesuit.com. Maybe that's a thing. Check that out. Don't, I'm sure you'll be in a list and they're going to blame me and what the fuck. Uh, but you heard about Count St. Germain and let's run down what Count St. Germain did. Uh, he is apparently, I, I don't want to tell you too much about it. I don't want to give away too much in the episode. Uh, and I don't want to go into my, my breakdown here cause I'm going to do that on the, on the real episode, but I'm going to tell you this for sure. Uh, Count St. Germain is a, is an amazing person. And he may have been a vampire and he may have lived for a thousand years. And look, it was easier to convince people back then that you've lived a thousand years. But also there's a lot of gullibility now. I I think if some dude came along and he uh, he spoke well and and, uh, he was a a decent looking fella, he could tell you that he's been alive for a thousand years and you would believe that bullshit. But back then they they didn't have any ask Jeeves to go, excuse me, has Count St. Germain been alive for a thousand years? And Jeeves would go, absolutely not. That's how Jeeves talks. Uh, so instead they had to just take his fucking word for it. Like, I guess he would, he would tell them tales of stuff that had happened a thousand years before, but he would tell it like he was in the room. And then they all just believed that he was in the room. Now he never said he was in the room. He would just tell it as if he were in the room. And this was enough to, to push these corn pone hillbilly idiot, hillbilly idiots, whether they were viscounts or dukes or duchesses, whatever the fuck they were impressed by this guy. Because also he came, the guy came with his own starter kit of bullshit too. He was uh, he was a stunning conversationalist. He was a virtuoso musician, uh, which back then means you could bang a block on a rock. <laughs> Come on, man. Was this guy play the loot? That's enough to fool these motherfuckers. Check me picking my loot. Bing, pling, 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 pling. He must have been alive for a thousand years. Uh, he had a ton of money and uh, he had gold, baby gold. He claimed he could take flaws out of diamonds. He could turn metal into gold. He invented some gold, like not, not gold. But a gold-colored metal called uh, Sense Around. I don't remember the fucking name. It was like Sin Samala. I don't know. Uh, so I might be mixing up because there's a few Count St. Germains in the episode. But this is the original Count St. Germain. He was, uh, like I said, a virtuoso musician, which, again, back then meant nothing. There's one string on a stick, and you're playing that. And everybody's like, ooh, this guy's a king. Uh, but he was a virtuoso musician who played the harpsichord. He played the fucking timbali. He probably banged a xylophone around for a while. Uh, as I mentioned, a stunning conversationalist. They said he could talk into the night on any topic. He could do all of the European languages with local accents to said languages. Uh, and he was also a master alchemist. So they're running this down like he's a special guy and everybody's in love with him. And I'm hearing this list and I'm hearing stunning conversationalist, virtuoso 
musician, master alchemist. I got one question for you, Count Germain. Uh, you're a master alchemist. Well, Count St. Germain, uh, you're a virtuoso musician. Uh, Count St. Germain, you're a stunning conversationalist. I got one question for you. Can you kick my ass? Because that's all that matters. No, I'm not going to do 20 paces and turn around and blow a harmonica with you, you fuckhead. I'm not going to whip up a potion and go, ha ha, look at this, it's the fountain of youth. No, I'm going to beat your ass in front of everybody. And you're going to get dirt all over your bloomers. You want dirty bloomers? Is that what you want, Constant Germain? Fucking call me out, baby. Step to me. Step to me, Germain. Uh, I try, try playing a one, <laughs> one string lute with one hand because I break the other one off, motherfucker. Uh, all right, so that's in this. Uh, it's Paranoid Strain, Secret Societies, episode 14. Available now. I'll talk more about it on the actual episode. Uh, you'll get here, hear about Count St. Germain. You'll hear about Jacques St. Germain. Uh, you'll hear about gorgeous jewels of unimaginable worth. I'm done telling you. I, that's enough teases for fuck's sake. Now, here's the thing. Again, I'm just recording this really quick thing before I get dressed. I'm, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm recording this. I'm in boxer briefs. That's it. I'm literally just out of the shower. I'm dripping on my desk. Can you hear it? I know you're thinking to yourself, wow, Mike, I'll tell you what, that's, uh, Mike's got a wet-ass podcast. <laughs> Mike's got a wet, got a wet-ass podcast, because uh, you can hear dripping as it's hitting the goddamn desk, and I didn't mean to do this, but I had to, and you're like, well, Mike, why didn't you do this earlier? Look, man, why don't you back the fuck off? Because uh, I was going to do a full episode, I'm not going to lie to you, and then uh, I just, I sat to do it, and then I was like, well, let's do this first, and then let's do this, and then let's do that. And I wound up doing other things, and uh, and here we are. You know, I had to get at least a couple of hours of sleep before I got on the goddamn plane, even though I'm going to get on the plane and fucking sleep there. Uh, but I still had to make sure that I had sleeping going on. So, so, and now we're up, and we took a shower, and we're all packed. Everything's packed. Go see my buddy Kenny get married. It's going to be fucking exciting. I'll tell you all about it on the other side, folks. Uh, but yeah, I'm in, I'm here in Boxer Breeze dripping all over my fucking desk. So I've got a, you got a wet ass podcast. Gonna have to mop this up before I hit the, hit the road. And I can't bring my microphone to Chicago because, uh, I, I just, I don't want my bag searched. Look, man, step off. I got to record Mex's podcast while I'm there. So it's like, I, I do that one and then do mine too. It's just like, it's just, uh, it's mind numbing to think about all the talking I would have to do. Uh, so well, I'll tell you this, like, oh, and so that's, by the way, Mex's podcast is available. Don't forget that. The, uh, you know, Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez is our good friend. You can join, uh, be his friend and then join his, this is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. Closed group on Facebook. You can hire him to do all the artwork you want him to do. Cause he's a fantastic guy. He's got his website art by DMH.com. And also please remember he's got his, uh, podcast. That's the most important thing. The phlegm cat podcast. Uh, that's four words, the phlegm P H L E G M cat C A T podcast available now. Ready for you to listen to, ready to love, ready to go ahead. And look, subscribe to the goddamn thing. Yeah, yeah, You can listen to all of them. He's been doing it over a year now, for fuck's sake. So you got to go ahead and catch up if you haven't been listening. You need, you need to be listening to this thing, damn it. It's the new wave. It's the cutting edge. Uh, but go ahead and check it out. It is there. Subscribe to that. That's our great friend, David Hernandez. I'll be at his house uh, over the next couple of days. That'll be fun. I will not be at Fearful Jesuit's house, but I've plugged him. I've plugged David. And, uh, and now I'm going to hit the road, I think. So here's the deal. I'm recording this now. Hold on. That's a weird yawn slash hiccup at the same time. I, hold on. My, my body just rebelled against me. Like, I, like I didn't have enough air because I was talking too fast or something. I don't know. I can't, I can't decide. Uh, all right. So here's, uh, here's what I'm telling you now. Um, this is in lieu of the actual show, but the actual show will be up in a couple of days. Like I said, probably Monday morning, but it might be Sunday because I get home late Saturday night and, uh, and I will have been in a mask forever. So who knows? But also having been in a mask for all that time, maybe I'll be ready to unleash some words on you guys. We'll see what happens. We'll take it. Let's take it by, uh, play it by ear, play it by mask. Let's take it slow. Uh, let's take a slow ride. Let's take it easy. Uh, I'm in the mood uh, 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 and the rhythm is right. All right. I got to go lift is fucking probably going to kill me. Uh, all right. So here's the deal. I'm, uh, I'm going to put a show up, attach a show to this. I have no idea what show it's going to be. I might just go fucking weird roulette and go to year three and just pull a fucking show out and just jam it in and not even know what it is. Normally I like to tell you, eh, it's the title. Oh, but I can't. Well, no, cause I won't. I want the microphone with me. Uh, regardless. So here's the thing I'm, I'm putting this out. And first of all, I'm going to stop saying, here's the thing. Uh, you've got this chunk of me now, and then there's going to be a, uh, an older show attached, which you'll enjoy and love. You'll bask in it and think it's the best. And then I will, uh, what will I do? I will I'll record another show for you on uh, Saturday or Sunday, probably Sunday, and it'll be out Monday morning. That's my assumption. 
Uh, but we'll see. We'll see exactly what happens with me and my, I mean, I might get the vid. Who knows, man? I'm going to an airport. Who knows what the fuck's going to happen to me? Uh, but all right, there you go. So uh, 40-Year-Old Boy Twitch channel, Super Angry Guy Gene, happy good time twitching hour. That's never just an hour. Go ahead and subscribe to the 40-Year-Old Boy Twitch channel. 40-Year-Old Boy YouTube channel is out there. Don't forget the Misfit Toys podcast. Hire me for cameo. All of that shit still applies, even on this standalone sting from the 40-Year-Old Boy show. Uh, and uh, and enjoy whatever the fuck episode I, I decide to unearth and tack on the end of this. Thank you for paying attention for as long as you have. And uh, and holy God, let's hope the plane stays in the air, right? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't why? I don't know why that came into my brain. Uh, fuck, I'll, I'll talk to you this weekend. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. I'm going to sing from now on. I'm calling this singing, despite all reports to the contrary. <laughs> As if there are reports. I, that literally, I just started it. The reports are all over the internet now. Mike Schmidt is trying to sing, and it is not singing. Absolutely not. Um, you can tell by that sound in the background and hopefully in the foreground that we are not in a basement. We are in a. Uh, <laughs> Get out of the basement! Because if I'm in the basement, nobody's laughing. Uh, it's coming from inside the basement! <laughs> not anymore. Right now, it is coming from inside my dog eared apartment. Uh, I, I, here's the thing, it's folks nice. it's, it's, it's cozy, it's quaint. It's, it's got, uh, you know, no good furniture whatsoever and a carpet that really looks like the St. Valentine's Day massacre occurred on it. But other than that... I disagree about your no nice furniture. That okay. is a lovely table. Uh, well, that's a desk over there. And yeah. then there's a cocktail bench. And then there's a, a chair, a big purple chair that I live in. That I literally, I sleep in it a lot of the time. And I sit in it and I roll in it. And, I disagree. Uh, you have a lovely desk. That chair too. is covered in my DNA. You have no idea. Oh, my Christ. I don't sit on that. I barely want to sit on this chair. Well, I mean, it's a good thing you don't sit on that chair because when you got up, it would be very Velcro-like because you would... <laughs> that noise would happen when you got out of my chair. Uh, no, I'm not that guy who marinates in his own cum. I mean, that's ridiculous. Who's that guy? <laughs> I'm not that guy who marinates in his own cum. You know that other guy. Hold on a minute. Let me see if he's on Facebook. Let me ask you this. I, we now have the title of the show. We might have the title of the fucking podcast. That's now the log line for this fucking show, and it's going on iTunes next year in the description. I'm not that guy who marinates in his own cum. <laughs> I had to do a fucking supervillain laugh with that. That was, oh my God, you're actually going to write down a title? Look at you pretending like you care. Um, well, no, I mean, I, I've jerked off in that chair, certainly, but I mean, but there's been all sorts of cleanup activity in, involved in making sure that there was not any sort of uh, residue or, less, or left-behindedness. Because uh, my house is not an adult bookstore, folks. Because, okay. because here's why. I will tell you this. But it's one of those three things because it has books. But there is not an adult and there's certainly not a store. This house is none of those things. Yes? I want more clarification on how you make sure that it's not. Is, is there a towel under you at all times, like at sex clubs? Or are you, are you in your underwear and just ejaculating up at yourself? How do you make sure it's not all over the couch? And if it does get on the couch, I would like to hear about the crime scene investigative cleaning crew that comes in to take care of it. See, there's no point now in talking because you've already guessed it. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. I mean, it's like, because if you would have just let me talk, I would have explained exactly what happens, but you just ran through a litany of things and all of those are true. Literally like every one of them. Uh, you know, so, hey, look, sometimes there's a towel and I'm surrounded by sorts of some towels. Sometimes it's sticky chest time and we go, hey, let's take care of this and try not to hit myself in the eye. Like literally that happens. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's, is that another name for the show? You're writing that down? Oh, my Christ. All right. Sticky chest time. You know, that's the new name of the podcast. I'm not that guy who marinates in his own cum. Sticky chest time. I, I actually want to do my own podcast. Stop. <laughs> Sticky chest. Stop. Sticky chest time. Uh, <laughs> you want to do your own? T- uh, yeah, you actually, you know what? You could do that podcast, Sticky actually. Chest- it would be a different podcast if I was doing it. Well, if anyone in the world knows that they can do a sticky chest podcast, it's going to be you. That's what I would guess. 
Uh, oh my god! See, if you did it, you would just call it Sticky Chest Podcast. I would call it the Matted Chest Hair Podcast. <laughs> I, I, yeah, exactly. I, and so, like I said, sometimes I would call it the Oops My Eye podcast. Oops I, My Eye podcast. <laughs> I, would, I would call it the Hey, I'm Glad I Ate Pineapple podcast. <laughs> sometimes I would call it that. <laughs> uh, and we're off and running. This is not the kind of talk you get in the basement, folks. This is, this is second floor it talk. Is not, it is not the talk this is clearly, this is an upstairs conversation. I will not lie to you. <laughs> This is not basement talk at all. In the basement, we're talking about my godson and his drums. Up here, forget about it. A lot more things are getting beat up. This is weird because this is a fourth floor conversation happening on the first floor, though. And the sad part is there's heaven on the seventh floor. (laughs) If only we were there. Uh, And even weirder than that, you know what's strange? Two doors down, they're laughing and singing and having a party. (laughs) You okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's just wrap it up. Honestly, how do we top this? We can't. We really can't. <laughs> All right. You know what's funny is I need. I feel the need to kind of tell people, uh, like what's happening, where we are, because um, there's new people here this week. In, I, in this room. I oh think. God. Yeah. I well, I mean, certainly in the chair. <laughs> you boil that chair, you're gonna get a kindergarten class. <laughs> so, um, if not an elementary school, oh, my Christ. Oh. but I think, and again, this is, this could be way out of bounds. Like this could be totally not true, but it's, it's me. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, bef- well, before, well, before I get into that, well, no, I should, I should do Just this up top. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, well, here's the reason I have to do that. All right. So, uh, well, no, cause I don't want, this is the thing I want to talk about later. I don't want to talk about it right now because if we talk about it right now, then it's like, then the show's over. Like, I mean, cause I don't, I don't have much else to talk about <laughs> except that. Um, I no, you're incorrect. Um, so I, uh, I did a Los Angeles podcast festival this past week. LA All right. Podfest? LA podfest.com. Hashtag LA podfest. Had fesh the stream had, had fesh had fesh. Hashtag the stream is down. <laughs> Hashtag the site is down. Yeah. Uh, so LAPodfest.com. I was at the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. That was the 2015 Woo! Los Angeles Podcast Festival. Fortuitous of them to hold that in 2015. Uh, or else while the title makes no sense. But uh, So I was there this weekend, and I'll tell you, I'm going to get into it more later. Uh, but what I'm going to tell you is, um, over the weekend, I met no less than... 15 people. See, this is the thing I want to talk about later. It go. It ties into what I was going to mention no, later. Okay. Can we just say, there's some new people listening, so here's some info you might not know. The, all right, there should be new people listening, and I'll explain later why, and it's up to you to remind me of that. <laughs> um, that down okay, you drop that. <laughs> uh, there should be new people listening. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, I can tell you this. Oh, by the way, I should, <laughs> this is a good time to talk about this. <laughs> I've gained a new listener recently. Really? Yes, I have. Um, well, first, I wanted to talk about something else really quick. Um, <laughs> and remind me where I'm at. Uh, Literally, this is a podcast of, there's stuff I'm going to say. Eventually. Stick hey. around. Well, that's what keeps people on board. They stick around hoping I'm going to finish one story. <laughs> and then by the time it's over, they're like, he didn't finish any of them, but it was awesome. I mean, I liked it. <laughs> this entire podcast is the verbal equivalent of a guy trying to start a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> I just pull the cord a hundred times and then say goodnight. I mean, literally. <laughs> Nobody's lawn gets mowed. So, uh... <laughs> so there's new people. So I should tell them what's happening. Uh, I'm Mike Schmidt. I'm the host of this podcast. And uh, it's called The 40-Year-Old Boy. And uh, if, you, if you stick around past this fucking nonsense in coming weeks, sometimes I'm alone. <laughs> right now, the person you hear across from me is my producer, Lily Von Stupp, who... who sometimes- Sometimes produces the show. Well, that's very rare these days. But uh, but she used to be, in the old days, I used to be a guy who was, compl- all I did was talk. That was the whole gimmick of the show. All I do was talk. And I had my friend Lily to record me, and then she edited the show, and then she put it up on the internet. Um, so that's who you hear with me now. She's across from me. And if you're new, you're like, why, the, why isn't she on microphone? She does not want to be on microphone. <laughs> 
And uh, and I will say that confidently. I will also say confidently, I've really never offered for her to be on microphone. <laughs> It's not like I've been pestering her to please get on microphone. Uh, we had one episode where she was on microphone, which was a great uh, conversation that we had about uh, uh, wombs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for the indeed, you're the little X. So uh, <laughs> so that's Lily, and she's here, and she's uh, she's you essentially in the room, and that's what makes the show work. Uh, but there are other instances if you'll if you stick around. I don't know if you will. I hope you do because there's more singing like this. <laughs> Uh, if you stick around, sometimes I'm alone. I'm alone in my apartment or I've, I've recorded shows on my phone while a dog trapped me in a bedroom. Uh, I've, I've done all sorts of different recordings because sometimes I'm traveling, sometimes I'm home. And uh, if I'm traveling, sometimes I'm in Chicago in my friend David's basement and then he is on the show. He's actually on microphone. And, uh, and he and I goof around and have some fun. But the show for the first seven years was solidly just me and Lily. Uh, except for the first seven episodes, which were solidly me and a guy named Eric. Listen, I don't know why you care so much about the history of this fucking show. But we're in year eight. That's still going. I mean, I, I don't know if that, that's something, right? I mean, we've got eight years of fucking nonsense built up, and that's great. So, uh, so that's good. So stick around. I hope you do, um, as you are new. And I will talk later about why none of them will. But still, there you go, maestro. Um... <coughs> So, uh, so I think there's, there's new listeners afoot. Like there's people who are listening. So that's why I'm explaining who you are. Um, and, and it's, so it's funny that I would talk about this. Um, well, not really. I wanted to talk about something else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh, so I, I should tell you this. I'm, uh, you know, I'm in California now, uh, and I travel all over the place. Sometimes I'm in Milwaukee. Sometimes I'm in Chicago. And, uh, um, people, some people have written me about this and it's, I think it's time I kind of give an update. Um, my mom. People ask about my mom all the time. Uh, and I, t- I did an episode once where my mom was diagnosed with lung cancer. And then I actually went to visit her and uh, she was drugged up and she thought I was there to murder her. And it was, it was a pretty fucking weird episode. I mean, being there was even weirder. But then talking about it after, it was just so strange. And it dawns on me that I haven't really talked much about my mom and what's going on. Uh, and, and by the way, for those of you new people, this is, I know how fucking weird it is to go like, hey, I'm covered in cum. Let's talk about my mom's cancer for just a second. <laughs> That's podcasting, <laughs> from what I've been told. <laughs> Cancer is very prevalent in podcasting. Cancer, depression, and the president. I, that's what I've been told <laughs> podcasting is about. So, uh, and Japan. So, uh, <laughs> so people have asked about my mom, and they're, and they're very sweet, and they're very nice. And, uh, and um, I haven't talked about it on purpose, because uh, my mom has kind of said, hey, you know, don't... All right, when I did the first show about my mom, uh, I mentioned her, and then I put up a picture of her on Facebook. And it was, uh, and, and that picture went up, and people started commenting on it and, and writing and all this stuff. Well, my mom uh, is 72, and not only 72, but ravaged by cancer. So her capacity to understand and her patience and for anything is, is at a, 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 a th- its thinnest. And if you knew my mom, you would know that that is, that is so fucking thin. That is Neutrogena thin. <laughs> so, uh, so she called me furious. And she's like, why did you give everybody the, all my information? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, you know, all these people are writing me and they're putting this stuff on this picture and they know who I am and they know where I'm at. And, they, you know, I don't fucking want anybody to do all that. I, I, who the fuck do you think? I, and I'm like, Ma, calm down. I said, I, I didn't do anything. I put up a fucking photo of us and I tagged you in it. She goes, what is that? What the fuck does that mean? Because now people are writing on it and then they're saying stuff about me and I think they know my address. And I'm like, come on, nobody knows your fucking address. I don't know what kind of chip they implanted in your lung to keep you breathing, but uh, dial it down from paranoid to mellow because you are freaking the fuck out here. And, uh, and I tried to explain to her the way it works is if you tag somebody, you know, it appears on her wall. She thought I went and showed everybody where she was and who she was and what she did. And, and it was just, it was just, so I had to fucking talk her down because she was pissed. I mean, and, and my mom, when my mom gets pissed, <laughs> hey, new people, this might be a good time to tell you about my CD, The Big Angry. <laughs> it's got a, a story about when my mom gets pissed. <laughs> go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, go to the Joe Business page and order it today. Or go to Spotify and give it a listen. But if you buy it, I'll sign it. I don't know what that fucking means. 
You listen to it on Spotify, call me, come over, sign your computer screen. Why not? <laughs> Have Sharpie, we'll travel. And so I do things. Knock on your door with a green Sharpie. Come in, sign your computer screen, come on your chair and leave. <laughs> Starting a Kickstarter for that tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> the Spreading the Love Tour, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> the Zygotes on Parade Tour, 2016. <laughs> the DN Awesome Tour, 2016. <laughs> so, uh, so when my mom gets fucking mad, you just kind of stay out of her way. You literally, you just kind of you shrink and you, you go in a fetal position and you cry and you talk about it 30 years later on a couch. So... <laughs> My mom was pissed, and she's like, you know, don't talk about me and don't do that stuff. And then when I finally calmed her down and explained it to her, she's like, well, that's okay. I mean, I, I understand. And I just felt it was weird that because people started to write her, like, on Facebook. And I, and that's cool, and you guys were sending her well wishes, and people sent me cards to give to her and things like that, which was really great. Um, but she had the lung cancer, and then she wound up being okay. They did, like, a, a lumpectomy, I guess it is, or whatever, and they took out a chunk of her right lung. And she was fine. And then she, like I said, I went and visited her and took the photo with her and everything was great. And, uh, and I put it up and, and, and it was fine and everything was good. And then uh, the cancer came back on my mom and uh, different lung. Uh, we have two, right? Yes. <laughs> I don't know with my mom. I really... <laughs> My mom's been smoking for like 60 years, and I'm not even, that's not even exact. She's 72, and I think she's been smoking since she was 12 years old. She recently, she quit when she had the operation, though. You know, like, she quit six months out. When she found out she got cancer, boom, cold turkey, done, and hasn't smoked since. So then she had the first operation, everything was fine, and then the cancer came back. And I talked to her about it, and I know that she was so upset and didn't want me to talk about it on the show, really. Because I, I asked her permission if I could talk about it the first time, and she said yes, because that's... You know, that's really personal. I mean, I, that, that's, yeah. you know, you unveil a ton of shit on here. And I look, I talk about me all the fucking time. Fuck, I already told you why my chest is sticky and my eyes are red. But uh, <laughs> I let you into my world. I shared that with you guys. You guys all know. There's a baby in my nose. I, uh, I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, if anybody out there knows the episode that came from, free everything. All the download sets, shirt, CD. First person? Anything, yeah. First person who emails or tweets? Uh, first person to email me. Okay. They got to email me. It can't be a Facebook deal. It can't be a, you know, I know that. Email, email you the episode yeah. that came from. I'll, I'll tell you this. If you, if, you, if you can tell me the episode it came from, yeah, then you get everything. I'll give you a shirt. I'll give you uh, all the download sets and a CD. Now, the thing is, unfortunately, all of you may already have those things. So I don't know what to do at that point. Um, you know what I will do? I'll tell you this, uh, cause we're going to be having the, uh, you know, the LA pod fest. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't listened to it yet to see if it's worth anything, but if it, is, you know, I'll tell you what, fuck it. Even if I'm not selling it, you'll get a copy of it. Although you may have already <laughs> bought the live stream. Who the fuck knows? Look at this garbage I'm giving away. What a terrible fucking person I am. All of a sudden I thought everything, everything had importer value. I, I don't, everything does. <sighs> you say that. Let me ask you a question. Yes. When you were younger, you would go out and you would buy an album. If you want it from the radio station as well, you didn't go. I already have that. You're like, oh my God, I want another copy of this thing that I love. Yay. Nobody wants two copies of a download set. That's Why ridiculous. Because that's fucking eight gigs on your computer I'm eating up. I'm not even, I don't know if you want that fucking happening. It's, it's I'm not an eight gig man. I'm not an eight gig man. That has value to you. Well, yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't you'll know. send them a personal greeting card as well. In yeah, I'll write them something. I'll You'll do something write them nice. An email. I will make sure it gets mailed. Well, because first, let, let's, 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 let's look at this. You know, nobody's going to know this at all. Like, nobody remembers that story or where it's from at all. I guarantee it. Okay. Um, well, regardless. Um, hey, my mom had cancer. All right, so. <laughs> also, great name for a podcast. <laughs> tell you what, if you can tell me. Hey, my mom had cancer. If you can tell me what episode that came from, that line. <laughs> hey, there's a baby in my nose. I will send you a chunk of my mother's lung now. <laughs> and I know you're out there going, well, not the cancer chunk. Well, of course the cancer chunk. I'm not going to go into my mom and get a healthy chunk of lung for you. Who do you think you are? I'm going to lead a little more than you answering a trivia question. You get a healthy chunk of my mom's lung or a chunk of my mom's healthy lung. 
So uh, I'll tell you what, if my mom thought me giving out her Facebook address was rough. (laughs) (laughs) Ma, it's Mike. Hey, uh, this is going to seem weird. (laughs) But on the show this week, I asked a trivia question that I thought was unanswerable. (laughs) I literally thought nobody was going to be able to step up with the answer. Well, unbelievably, (laughs) 10 people had it. Now, luckily, I promised this only to the first person. So, huh, Ma? And I, I understand that this is awkward. <laughs> How do you feel about me coming in to Florida? And for a visit, certainly I'll see you and Dan. It'll be fantastic. Uh, but I'm going to have to ask for a healthy chunk of your lung. Is that possible? I'm sorry, Ma, I keep saying that incorrectly. A chunk of your healthy lung. How about that? <laughs> so... See, that's a lot of crazy shit to drop on somebody. So the the the, uh, the cancer came back on my mom, and uh, she was a little uh, worried, as you would be, I would imagine. And it's funny because again, my mom is fucking iron tough. If you know, if if a uh, you ever seen Beauty and the Beast when they turn like the candles and the fucking piano into people or whatever the fuck, right? And all that. My mom's an anvil. <laughs> Like, they went into a blacksmith's joint and they tapped the fucking anvil with a magic wand and bling, there's my mom ready to punch you in the face. (laughs) Now, certainly there's some rust on the inside of the anvil, as we've already established. (laughs) We thought we'd removed it, but now it's come back. (laughs) So my mom's fucking tough, is my point. So uh, she beats the cancer the first time and then it comes back. And uh, and she was clear for, you know, months. And then it came back and she's just like, nah. So my mom in the beginning is, again, that thing where she's like, well, I beat it once. We got to beat it again. And here's her deal. She's she could have just gone and attacked it with lasers, um, which sounds awesome. That sounds like, <laughs> oh, my God, wait a minute. Is my mom the Star Wars sequel? I don't know if she is. She might be. Is my mom. Is there a black doom chirper inside my mom's lungs? <laughs> oh, I'll too. All right. So that was my C-3PO, by the way. How terrible was that? <laughs> That was a C-1PO. That, you know, that was a C-no-PO. Oh, R2. <laughs> Let's have some tea. I wish I had a robot cock in my go- copper ass. All right, so he's gay, right? All right, so. I think so. I, think so. I believe so, <laughs> certainly. Uh, I've never had a sit down with him. I tried. I had a little, did you spit soda? I almost got you to spit soda. Almost. All right. Uh, so... <laughs> My favorite thing is that he's the one I didn't get to sit down with. Like, I talked to everybody else. I talked to Lando. You know, I talked to all of them. I talked to Padma. Uh, is that her name, Padma? Wasn't that Natalie Portman? Or is that the, that's actually the host of Top Chef. Like, I, maybe I had to talk with her. I don't, I don't care. I'm not a Star Wars person. <laughs> I, I set my phasers on boring for this fucking anecdote. <laughs> Fuck you, nerds. I know that's not Star Wars. So, I, I imagine some idiot at home, she's like, oh. I know. Literally, some guy at home just went, Con! <laughs> He's so mad at me. Oh, Go open a cabinet and have tribbles fall all over you. All right, so. So, uh, my mom is tough. and uh, But you know what? Even, uh, even if cancer comes to town, even the sheriff may hide in his office for a while because cancer doesn't fuck around and it's got guns blazing and it's coming for you. And yeah, my mom beat it once. Uh, but a second time, you know, cancer comes swooping in. So they said to her, here's the thing. You can attack it with lasers, uh, chemotherapy and all that fucking bullshit. Or we can do surgery on you again. But here's the deal. If we do surgery on you again, because I will tell you this is in her left lung now. She had her right lung done. And they said, uh, if we do this surgery, we're going to take out another chunk of your lung. We're hoping it doesn't spread. We're hoping that this works. But, uh, but at the same time, you know, if we do this, you're done. Like, th- there is no more surgery for you because we can't take any more pieces of your lung out. You're not Mr. Potato Head. You know what the fuck? It's just <laughs> you need those some, some things you absolutely need to have. Uh, and, I, you know, they could have Darth Vader her and put him one of those fucking <laughs> the fucking bellows or something. You know what I mean? By the way, that's what I think Darth Vader has inside of him. That's how much I know about Two it. That, the fucking fireplace bellows. <laughs> 
That's exactly what, because that's what I picture. It's just, he, literally, the inside of Darth Vader, the, like, the, the guy, it's like, the, you ever see in the Titanic when they go below decks and they're just like sweaty dudes shoveling in coal? There's just two sweaty dudes inside the Darth Vader suit <laughs> pumping the bellows. <laughs> so, uh, Luke, I am your fireplace. So, my mom is uh, perplexed. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what to go to. Because the chemo, there's no guarantee that that's going to fucking work. I mean, it might shrink shit and it might not shrink shit. She has no clue. But uh, the surgery is also equally dangerous, if not more so, because they could take out a big chunk and then it may have spread. And then she'll have no choice but the lasers. But the way she thought about when she sat down and went, well, you know what? If I do the lasers and they don't work, I will be very upset that I didn't do the surgery because if I do the surgery and it doesn't work, I can go ahead and do the lasers. So my mom went ahead and had more surgery. Uh, And they fucking, Ron Pope peeled her. They opened her up. They, uh, they, they used their, their law machine. They used their knife set and they carved her up. They took more lung out. And uh, they checked the, the lymph nodes. They checked the rest of her and she was good. Uh, she came out of the surgery fine. She was out of the hospital in like three fucking days because she's a machine. And then she went home and, uh, and decided to live a cancer-free life. She was excited. So she's like, all right, man, I can do this. No problem. Now, I should tell you, my mom lives in Chicago, but she has a uh, winter home in Florida. So all of this is taking place in Florida. When I went to visit her, she was in Florida. When she had her, she had her surgeries in Florida. But they were going to be heading back to Chicago in the summer because they're trying to sell their home there so they can settle in Florida full time. And it's been a long process because my mom has lived in her home in Chicago for, you know, 30 years, I think, or 25 years. No, not 30 because I'm, what am I, 48? Eh, probably at least 20 years they've been there. So Christ, no, earlier than that, man. 25 years they've lived in this house. Uh, so she wants to sell it. But the problem is for every one of those 25 years, as indicated by the double cancer ex- extravaganza, my mom smoked in that fucking house. Yeah. So when you walk inside it, it's just, it's like if, if there was a museum of science and industry diseased lung exhibit that you could walk into and look around, my mom's essentially living in a diseased lung. The house is just thick tobacco and brown walls and the ceiling. And, and, and she didn't realize it. I would go stay there for Christmas and I would try to breathe. And I was like, I, you know, I'm worried I may have cancer just from secondhand house. <laughs> Literally, just whatever the fuck she's got going on. It just, I, I didn't want to, it, it's a thing. So, uh, so they have to strip all the paint and, and rejuvenate the house and, and all of these different things. And then they have to uh, go ahead and take care of the landscaping. My mom's always been a landscaper. My mom loves flowers and stuff, but... As she gets older and cancer ravages her lungs while her hips are going and her knees are going and she's just, she, she's falling apart. She really is, you know, and, and she knows it. She readily talks about it, but she fights through the fucking pain. I mean, if, you know, if, if you ever want the definition of pain, go watch my mom walk up a flight of stairs Oof. or down a flight of stairs or listen to me talk about my mom walking up a flight of stairs. That's also painful <laughs> probably, but she's just limping and holding them one at a time and that it just stops and has to breathe and then walk down because again her knees and her hips and everything's fucking shot so she gets she's cancer free and she's gonna get the house fixed she's gonna take care of it and uh, i stay in contact with her i talk to her three times a week you know and she's in florida my aunt lives down there everything's great well last year sometime uh she calls me and, and i and my mom doesn't call me Okay, I will say that. And not because she doesn't love me, but I think my mom has that old person thing inside of her of, hey, my son should call me. And I get that, you know, and I should. I should call her. And sometimes I'll go a week or a week and a half and not call her, and and I can feel it. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, fuck, I got to call and check, especially now that she's been sick. You know, because you get that thing where, and and this will sound ridiculous, and I, I hope, you know, Lily has lost her parents. And, and it's devastating, you know, and I lost my father at a very young age and I still haven't gotten over it, of course. And that's why we're doing a podcast, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> literally it's called the 40 year old boy, but initially it was going to be called daddy's gone. <laughs> <coughs> but unfortunately that name was taken by every other podcast. And the rest of my stand-up comedy career. <laughs> Daddy's gone. <laughs> so, uh, so it's devastating. And I can't even imagine losing my mom. 
I, I, I've in myself, I've inured myself to it and I'm prepared, I think, but you're never prepared, never prepared to, to not be able to pick up the phone or go and see a person you've known literally from the second you were alive, the second you were conceived. I am part of her. Uh, granted, I was removed a little more gently than the last few parts of her were. <laughs> And I wonder if those parts of her lung are just feeling the same thing that I'm feeling, you know, the same kind of separation anxiety. Because they're like, I wonder if, they, you know, I wonder if they call. Do you think they ever call? <laughs> oh man, I gotta. It's been a week. I gotta call Pat and check on her. <laughs> Sorry, we were cancerous and put you all through all that, but we miss you. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I, I can't even conceive of her being gone i mean I, I i think of it and in your head you think well i'm prepared and everybody gets old and you wonder if that's going to happen but then when you get the gut punch phone call that she has cancer and it really kind of knocked me out when i did the show i kept saying she was and then i'd correct myself and she is you know because she is she still is that's the whole point she still is my mom is and so while she is i need to take advantage of that i need to speak to her i need to talk to her so she gets through the second cancer and, uh, and then last year, she's worrying about the house, and I had visited her in Florida. She's trying to get everything taken care of. And then she contacts me. Uh, she calls me. And like I said, my mom does not call me. So when she calls me, there's only two reasons. One, something's up. Or two, she wants to make me feel shitty about the fact that I haven't called her. Because she'll call and leave a message of like, yeah, Mike, it's my, yeah, nothing important, just, you know, checking on you. And uh, which I know means, where the fuck are you? Because <laughs> how do you not call your mom? You know what I mean? What's that, 10 minutes? Because that's the thing. It's not like my mom sits and talks to me and talks my ear off. She will. I mean, we can talk. We talk 20 minutes. And I, I love my mom. And I will tell you this. She has five boys. Clearly, I'm her favorite. That can't even be argued. And not just because all my brothers are jagoffs. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom, uh, my mom uh, held out great hopes for me. I think she could see as a child that I was smart and all of that. And then uh, she didn't realize that the rest of me was not so smart. So she... <laughs> I was going to wind up in a, at a dining room table with a stripper talking about her cancer. Uh, literally, in her mind, she was like, boy, someday he's going to cure my cancer. And in reality, I sat here and called a cum-drenched story about her fucking lung cancer with a stripper laughing at it. There you go, Ma. I hope you're proud. <laughs> So uh, she calls me, and I, in my head, I'm like, ah, fuck. You know, because I had not called her in a while, and it was this, uh, and I got the, hey, Mike, it's Ma. Go ahead and give me a call when you get a chance. And I heard that, and I knew that that was not the, hey, where are you phone call. And in my head, I actually went, does my mom have three lungs? <laughs> And you know what? To raise five boys by yourself and yell at them to keep them in line, I wouldn't shock me at all if she had three lungs. <laughs> but, uh, but I knew, you know, something's up, so I called her back. Because, oh, I should also say that she called me at midnight, which is 3 o'clock in the morning in Florida. So I called her up. And, I, and I, I, my mom's a late person, by the way. It's not, she wasn't up, you know, rocking back and forth in a chair, gripping her hands together. She's up late. Like, I'll call my mom at, at, at midnight. I'll call her at one her time because I know she's awake watching fucking, you know, reality shows or on the Home Shopping Network buying fucking garbage, uh, which then I will get for Christmas. Yay! Yeah, I, my favorite one time she gave me, uh, she gave, I got a, like a travel pack. Um, it, it, it's a, you put your shaving cream and all your bullshit in it and stuff and you open it, it zippers and it, you open it up and it has a little hook and you can hang it in the shower with you and it's filled with that. And I was like, oh, this is, well, thanks, Ma. Because she knew I was traveling on the road for comedy. And uh, but it, it, all of us got it, all five of us. Like my brothers and I, we all opened it up. We all got one. And uh, my three younger brothers, they don't go anywhere. I mean, they, they <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you keep it in your bathroom and just keep it handy in case you run out of stuff or whatever. I'm just like, all right, I, that's cool. Because Lenny and I traveled. We did stand up. But that's what she would do. She would get, my mom would get functional gifts. Like one time my mom gave me, because <laughs> again, I'm traveling for stand up comedy. She gave me road flares. 
and uh, and a rain poncho that I could unfold if I ever had a flat tire and uh, and hand warmers that you snap and you keep in your hands to keep you warm in case my car breaks down. I'm like, Mom, could you get me a shirt that I could wear on stage instead of <laughs> waiting for disaster to happen while I'm driving between South Dakota and Iowa? Could you do that possibly? But she's looking out for me. That's what she would do. Uh, so she called again, and, and I knew I had to call her back. So I called her, and she said, hi. She goes, I just want to tell you. Uh, Lenny's traveling, so I haven't talked to him yet. So I said, well, I'll talk to whoever you need me to talk to. You don't have to call everybody. And she goes, well, I've called your brothers. I've called some. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know how I have my bad hip and my knee, and I was in the doctor's office, and I've been getting headaches. And so they went and did a routine look. And... Uh, I have brain cancer. And, uh, you know, let me just go ahead and commend cancer on its choice of attack points at this point. Because <laughs> cause if you're going to take out my mom, you don't go looking at fucking, you know, nobody wants shoulder cancer. Like, no, you're going, you're going right for the meat of it. You know what I mean? You're going right for the lungs and the brain. You're, Cause it's, it, you know what? I figured cancer tried one lung and then the other lung. And I went, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> this woman is unkillable. And it went right for her brain. And, uh, just the word brain on its own is, is ominous. Yeah. Cause whatever it means, whether you're studying it to find out the mysteries of it, <laughs> or you have a bruise on it, or you have a concussion, which is a bleeding of the brain, any of it, anything at all to do with your brain is fucking brutal. Because, uh, you, you know, I mean, that's it, man. That's fucking lights out. That's, that's uh, you know, you didn't pay your electric bill and everything's going under, you're done. And you will, you, because, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, the other day and he has a friend who has Alzheimer's at 51. Oof. And, uh, and he had called him not knowing that and he's, and he's asking him a question and uh, the guy's kind of foggy and a little weird. And then he's trying to get him to do a, a thing for him. He's like, hey, well, you do, because it's your business. You do this. So, and then my, his friend said, well, no, no. He said, what do you mean? He goes, no, um, I have early onset Alzheimer's. And my friend said, give, give the wife your phone. Or give your wife the phone. And uh, he said, is he kidding? And his wife said, nope. Uh, He's had it now for just about a year. And so now he visits him and they go to dinner and they laugh and they goof around and he's still himself. But then uh, every once in a while, his friend will lean to his wife and go, who's him? Who's he again? And she'll go, you worked with him. You know him. And, and he's like, oh, where did we work? Um, you know, I have empathy for anybody uh, who, who has, you know, Alzheimer's, of course, is devastating to me because that just that just gets at your very fiber. That gets at the very core of your being because it erases you. And we all want to be remembered in some way, one or the other, by even, you know, history or your son or a dog you were nice to once. You would like someone out there to have a good thing to say about you once you're gone. But you'd also like to remember that. So I've always had a problem with uh, brains and, uh, and injuries of that ilk. I, I've talked about it on the show here. When anybody has, uh, when I see anybody who has a learning disability or is challenged in some way, um, I, I don't know the word I'm supposed to use because, again, I don't want to offend anybody. Of course, the irony being that if I use that word, they would be the last people to be offended by it. <laughs> they would probably just come over and drool on my shoulder and hug me, but still. <laughs> but anyone with Down syndrome, anyone who has uh, severe mental incapacities, uh, I, I want to cry and hug them immediately uh, because I know they won't be able to verbalize what I've done with them by touching them. So anyway, <laughs> how terrible would that be? No, it's terrible. It's, ter it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I want to, I want to console them in some way, even though they don't know what they've lost, you know, uh, but all I can do is talk. The only thing I have is my brain and, and my, and uh, being able to fire on all cylinders and, and, express myself and communicate that's the only thing i can do and i i think i do it extremely well but even if i just did it normally to lose that to never have that is crushing to me i because i can't imagine losing the only gift i have so when i see people who don't have it or never had it or have lost it i i just want to reach out and help i want to do anything i can so then to hear from my mom she's got brain cancer because I don't, I don't even know 
Like, dude, I don't even know what the fuck that means. I truly don't. Um, Because, again, your brain is a fucking question mark anyway. Uh, And and look, they're taking parts of my mom out anyway. She needs a hip out and a new hip and a new knee. And, you know, like I said, even if they fucking pull out all of her lungs, they can throw a couple of fireplace bellows in her and then she's Darth Mom. (laughs) Fine. But they pull out her brain and and it's fucking scarecrow time. I mean, I I can't see my mom dancing on a yellow brick road because she'd punch the fucking wizard in the face. Literally. (laughs) I can just picture my mom as the scarecrow. Everybody's like, you know, shut up that fucking dog. (laughs) Toto just yapping. Why'd you bring that fucking dog? So, look, if you are new and you don't stick around, fuck you. Because I am fucking awesome. (laughs) You know what I think about? I want new people to think that I'm actually reading. Like, this is all scripted. Like, I have this all in front of me somewhere. Like, I just, I have, hey, new people, let me describe where I'm at. I'm at a desk right now, and I have 17 legal pads all spread out in front of me. This entire show is handwritten. Literally, I had a production meeting yesterday. I'm like, all right, I'm going to start with cum chair. And uh, (laughs) we're going to segue into my mom's cancer for a bit. (laughs) So, uh, so brain cancer, man. I don't know. Again, I don't even know what the fuck. Those are two words that they shouldn't even be in the dictionary together because it's just combustible, man. That's just, that's just the fucking Mentos and Diet Coke of medical diagnoses. (laughs) It's just kind of, it does, man. You're over. It's finished. All you know is don't do it. But if you're going to do it, it, film it because it's going to be a fucking mess. Is it too early to say I'm great again? Really? Because that, uh, so, so it's, I mean, it's fucking, you know, it's midnight. My mom's in a dark house in Florida and she's, I have brain cancer. And I, I just said, Oh, fuck I don't I, mean, I don't even I couldn't process it I don't know what to do and I just said all right well what what's what's next because again you can't be cutting shit out and she's like well um uh, I have to see my oncologist again and I have to find out what the procedure is and then they're scheduling me and when my mom I talked about this before my mom had her initial lung cancer diagnoses they put her off for like six weeks and they kept saying, well, we'll get you in for surgery and we'll do this, but you got to talk to this person first. And she's like, well, I have cancer. And they're like, yeah. And she said, get it out. Fucking get it out. And they were like, well, it's not that easy. We have to wait because it's really small and we have to find out if it moves. We're going to monitor it. And, see. and she's like, I don't want it to fucking move. Get it out. But I told her, you know, you kind of got to trust these idiots. I know that seems like a weird dichotomy, but you have to because they know. I mean, they, I, and I, that's, that was what I leaned on because uh, my mom has years of experience with doctors, not only herself, but, uh, but fucking, you know, she took care of my grandmother in her fading days. And my mom and my aunt took turns basically keeping her in hospice at my aunt's house and taking care of her. And doctors would come and they would tell things. And my mom would sit them down and go, I want, I want to know fucking everything. And she would make the doc cause she wouldn't let the doctor just come in and put a stethoscope on my grandmother's forehead and walk the fuck out. She'd be like, no, no, why, why this, why that, why this medicine, where does this go? My mom knew fucking everything. And my mom is a walking pharmacy. I mean, literally, you know, I told you, you go to her house, you open up the cabinet and, and it's, it's like Mr. Moose had an addiction problem because <laughs> instead of ping pong balls, it's just brown bottles and they rain the fuck down on your head. Uh, so that's who my mom is. And she's just, and my mom, you know, she's, she's knows a lot about drugs. Get year one. So... <laughs> That's who she is. And so she's, she knows about diagnoses and things. And so she wants doctors to give her answers. And she wants doctors to fucking take care of everything. Um, but my mom is tough, too. Like I said, she's fucking tough. So she's like, I already beat it twice. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Whatever they tell me to do, I'll do. But, uh, but I'm not that worried about it. We'll, we'll take care of it. Uh, and when I say my mom is tough, again, I... If you're new, I'll just throw this. And if you're old, well, you know, sit down and relax because you've heard this story. Uh, my mom had a, uh, she broke her back and was in the hospital. And then she had a hysterectomy while she was in the hospital. She's like, while I'm here, 
<laughs> Why don't you make sure I don't have any more of these idiot fucking kids? <laughs> So they took care of that, and my mom was in the hospital for a good six weeks because of uh, she wound up getting pneumonia and getting an infection, all these different things. Well, we were at home with a live-in babysitter named Lynn. Uh, Lynn is like 22. Well, then uh, it turns out Lynn fucks my older brother. And my mom finds out about it. Lynn is having an affair with my older brother, who at the time I think is 16, maybe 17. So uh, my mom finds out about it. She's still in the hospital, okay? And then she arranges for us to leave our house and go stay with our grandparents up in Wisconsin. And when we go up to stay with our grandparents in Wisconsin, here's what my mom does. My mom calls her friend Mark, and she's like, come to the hospital. I need you here. And he's like, all right, well, are you okay? And she she goes, come to the hospital. So uh, Mark comes to the hospital. He comes in, and my mom goes, help me out of bed. He's like, what are you talking about? She goes, help me out of bed. And he, he's like, why? And he's like, she says, where's Lynn? And Mark is like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. And she goes, Mark, I'm going to ask you again, where is Lynn? And he's like, she's staying at my house. He goes, all right, let me, help me out of bed. So he helps her up. Because my mom, again, she's just, she, you, she is a force of fucking nature. He helps her out of bed. My mom gets dressed. They walk down to Mark's car. And he's like, I don't know what you're doing. What do you, and she goes, let's go to your house. Let's go to your house. And Mark is like, you've got to calm down. Pat, you're still sick. You're still healing. She's like, we're going to your house now. I need to talk to her. I absolutely need to talk to her. And uh, they go walking up to the door and Mark goes to open the door. And my mom goes, no, knock. And Mark is like, what are you? And he, she goes, ring the bell, knock, knock. And uh, they, so Mark, he, again, he does not fuck with my mom. He's known my mom forever. He's her drug connection. He's had stolen property hidden in my house. All these different things. But he knows that my mom is the toughest person he's ever fucking met. And he's not going to cross her. And so he knocks on his own door (laughs) at his own house. Because he can see the look in my mom's eyes. And he doesn't want to fucking argue with her. He knocks on the door. Lynn opens the door. Sees my mom. Makes a face. My mom grabs her by the shirt. Punches her in the face. Breaks her jaw. Hits her three times, lays her out on the floor, looks at Mark and goes, let's go back to the hospital. (laughs) That's my mom. So when brain cancer saunters in, my mom is like, oh, you should have stayed at Mark's house. (laughs) Knock on my skull. But Ma, I don't, it's your skull. It's your, knock on my skull. My mom is going to punch brain cancer in the face three times. Break its jaw and leave it laying in the foyer. <laughs> just, just brain cancer knocked out cold in her medulla oblongata. So, uh, so she gets brain cancer and I don't know what the fuck to do. And I'm scared. And my mom in talking to her in the beginning, she was just like, well, I've, I've beat it before. I'll beat it again. It's fine. I said, what do you need to do? She goes, well, I need to wait again, motherfucker. I don't get it. So she has to wait. And then it turns out she goes to the oncologist and she goes to a general physician. And then she goes to a specialist back to the oncologist, to another physician and a specialist and a skull guy and a brain guy. And, and, I, and I go, do you want me to come there? Like, what's happening? She goes, nah, you can't do anything here. I said, well, yeah, I can be there for you when you, when you get out. Like I was the first, cause I went to visit her after her first operation when she had the, the lung, the first lung. Uh, and she's like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm like, all right, well, what, what do you, I don't even know the procedure. Like what do you need to do? And she goes, oh, I'm just finding out about it. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> you have brain cancer. I know you want to poo-poo it and you want to say, oh yeah, it's not that, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, I, I, I think I need a box of Kleenex and I just, you know, you blow your nose and you hope it comes out when you do it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But that's just my mom. That's just straight old school. You know what I mean? She's just like, oh, you know, I think, you know, Dizzy Gillespie, I think you just go ahead and do that thing where he makes the pouches where he puts his finger on his mouth and goes, and uh, just the cancer will just pop right out of my ears. It'll be fantastic. (laughs) Mom, stop pretending like brain cancer is not a thing. It's a thing. You got it. You got it, baby. If anyone can tell me what movie that's from. (laughs) I'm giving away a ton of shit this week. Look at me. (laughs) W.M.A. Schmidt's going to make me rich. Uh, if anybody can tell me what that is from, <laughs> stupid, all these obscure bullshit references. Like, if you can, oh, by the way, if you know this and if you know this, I'm stupid. All right. I'm not really stupid. You choose your words. God damn it. Four agreements. Uh, be impeccable with your words. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. 
Don't take anything personally. Those are the four agreements I've made with a book. <laughs> Some guru idiot wrote those. And I said, yes, I'm in. Choose your words carefully. He's not an idiot. Never met the man. <laughs> Yet. Oh, I'll meet him. Once this podcast is over, I'm just going to throw on some fucking white jeans and, and uh, flip flops. And I'm going to go Carlos Castaneda my way across the country to meet this guy. <laughs> just going to cross stupid beard and had a Jonathan Livingston seagull on my fucking shoulder. And I'll meet this dude and go, Haha, I love your agreements, dude. I'm sorry, but anybody who wrote that lives in California. <laughs> yeah, it's a good Maybe point. Portland. It won't be much of a journey. That's fine. Maybe Portland. Could be Portland. Might be India. I don't know. But I got a lot out of it. I love the book. I will not lie. Those are my new agreements. Do I honor any of them? No. But still. I'm very impeccable in my words. Remember when I came in my eye in the first minute of this show? It's truth. It's my truth. Hey, man, if you can't handle my truth. It's my truth. You're damn right. If you can't handle my truth, don't shake my hand. Because my hand is covered in my truth. <laughs> Let's get back to cancer. Now. <laughs> the new name of the podcast. <laughs> Every podcast. That Sharpie's going to run dry with all the possible names. Let's get back to cancer. Done? Take it away. I will. So my mom is like, I, you know, I don't know what I got to do. And she's trying to kind of downplay it. And I get that. But I, I even say to her, I go, Ma, it's, you know, I'm not nine. Yeah. You know, I'm 48 at this point, and and you can share with me what we need to do. I do. You know, do you want me there? And she's like, No, it's okay. I just it's a it's a whole thing where I've got to talk to them and figure it all out. So, and this is in April, I think. So it might have been March, but she she tells me she's got to go. Through, and so she, I call her. I'm calling her every day, and she's keeping me updated on her visits and stuff. And it's that thing where. It's her, you were hurrying up and waiting because we don't really know what's going to happen until she has meetings. But then I, now you start to feel the urgency a little bit. So I'm calling her all the time and we, you know, we have nothing to talk about. Literally. It's just, how are you? I'm fine. It's hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't, I don't want to talk about that, but I, I'm not ready to not hear her voice yet. So I'm trying to fill my head and my heart with her voice while I have the chance because, uh, even if brain cancer doesn't completely take her away, it may take parts of her away. And I don't want to take that chance. So I call her all the time, and I'm, I'm probably being a pest, but she humors me, and we talk. And she's always happy to hear from me, but then she'll, you know, what are you doing? What's going on over there? And how is this? And how's your life? And, you know. Uh, so we're touching base. We're finding out. And then she's got a procedure coming up. And she's like, all right, you know what? It's going to be next week. And I said, what, what are they doing? Like, I don't even know. Because, again, brain cancer to me, I've seen enough science fiction films that, you know, I, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if they're going to saw off the top of her skull like a hat. I don't know if her head's going to be a pan like in Reanimator. I mean, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Because my mom, again, literally, she could survive that operation. Like, she would, they would cut her head off, put it in a pan. And the next thing you know, I'm here in California. I open up. There's my mom's headless body. <laughs> Why haven't you called? Just scrawls a note. Because uh, she, she would survive it. I know she would. So she's got a procedure coming up, and she doesn't really want to talk much about it. And, uh, and so I don't know if they're going to do surgery or gar- carve her up or go in there or how, or, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to take a fucking thing and snake it up her nose. And then I don't know if, you know, I don't know. I get no clue, man. Because, uh, again, I'm the guy who talks about cancer with a stripper on a podcast. <laughs> Not the guy my mom hoped would be curing, curing it later on. So then finally she tells me, she's like, I'm going in next week. And I said, all right, well, do you know what it is yet? She goes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, I said, oh, that's, I don't ever believe that, but go ahead and tell me what it is. She says, well, uh, you have to go in and then they take a halo. And they screw it into your head. And that alone, right there, just that phrase. Because you know, again, my mom matter-of-factly says, they take a halo and they screw it into your head. So they're turning screws into bone to hold her head in place. And then they screw that into your collarbone so you don't move. Because they're going to be shooting laser beams into your head. Uh, my mom has lesions on the brain. I think she has three. 
So they have to go in, and what they do is they shoot them with uh, radiation therapy. And, uh, and, you know, one of two things happens. Either it cures your cancer or you join the Avengers. So I don't... <laughs> Kind of a win-win. <laughs> so you screw a halo into my mom's head and into her shoulders or whatever to fucking hold. And again, I don't even understand it. Like she's explaining it, and and uh, from the second she's like, oh, they take a halo and they screw it into your head, and then she may have talked for an hour. But all I heard was, <laughs> and the thought of listening to screws go into your skull. Because uh, I'm that guy who hears the dentist's drill in my head when I'm laying there in the chair and keeps my eyes closed because I go, I don't, I can't open my mouth and see the smoke. I just, I just can't. And I'm good at the dentist. I've been good at the dentist since I was a kid. I mean, I would show up and they, they loved me and they fucking everything they did. They, they'd be fucking in me up to the elbow, uh, and then they'd start on my teeth. Um, I didn't, I didn't make a sound. <laughs> uh. So, but I, but I still, you never get past the crunch. Nope. So that's all I hear as she's explaining this procedure, but they're basically going to freeze her in place and, uh, and put her, they, you know, she's been taking MRIs too, and she's freaking out because she's in a tube and can't move and all that kind of stuff. And oh my God. So they're going to screw her in place and just hold her down and then, and then shoot radiation and lasers into her head to blast the lesions out. And I just, I go, do you want me to come there? Do you have me? She's like, nah, don't, please. You know, it's, it's fine. I'll be fine and everything's good. And, but, uh, but she betrayed a little bit of fear as we spoke. Because, again, like I said in the beginning, she's like, ah, whatever, I'll take care of it. And then as the weeks go by, she's like, well, I just wish they'd get me in there. You know, my, my oncologist is pregnant, so she keeps canceling appointments. And, I mean, you know, I understand you want to have a baby, but uh, quit the fucking business because, you know, I have cancer. You want to fix my head, please? I mean, she's that person. And, uh, and I get that. She's totally losing her fucking mind because, uh, yeah, I, yeah I'm but again, I go, Mom, maybe, you know, they know that they can afford to cancel this appointment. It's not like your cancer is getting worse or I don't, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm fucking dumb. I, don't, I have no clue. Uh, you know, I, told, I went to WebMD and thought I had thrush, which I thought made me thought I had AIDS. You know what I mean? I, I did that one year. So... <laughs> You remember that? It was fucking weird. Something was wrong with my mouth. And I'm like, I, and it was wrong for like three days. And then I Google on WebMD and I'm like tongue and then this and then thrush and then AIDS. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? I haven't even left my house. <laughs> and again, you wouldn't have a bad fucking piece of fruit from Mexico or something. Cilantro's killing people. And then fucking, you know, broccoli gave me AIDS. So feel free to write that down. Uh, why not? Because we have too many show titles with AIDS in it already. That's a good point. <laughs> but you know, not enough with broccoli. So maybe it balances out. Didn't David draw broccoli once? I think so. He drew me on stage. No, it was uh, it was me and a piece of celery and a light bulb. You remember that? Yes. I don't even know what that fucking show is about. Dude, I look at the artwork sometimes and I'm like, what the fuck was that show about? <laughs> Because he always tries to take the most abstract, ridiculous thing that he can, and which makes me happy. But it just I'm just like, why? Celery, a fucking light bulb, and me, and we're dancing. Like, we're walking in a fucking center ring, like at a circus. I don't know, dude. Uh, I look forward to this week's artwork with me in a halo. <laughs> uh, you know what would be a cool piece of artwork? Me as an angel with a halo, but then the halo is actually screwed into my skull. Hmm, there you go. Write it down. All right, so. Two on topic. It is. He will say that, too. It's on the nose. He hates on the nose. And I do, too. Honestly, uh, between you and me, right now, I'm pretty sure uh, he's going to be doing Oops My Eye podcast or whatever that Whoa, means. Whoa, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so I asked my mom if she needs me to come out there, and she's like, no, it's fine. It's, it's going to be okay. And But she's still a little, I can hear her. She's trepidatious. She doesn't know what's going to happen. Uh... So all, all I can do is wait. You know, she's going in the next morning at 6 a.m. and the procedure's at 9. And then I, you know, I think about calling her. But I don't want to call her for two reasons. One, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if the procedure will allow her to be able to talk to me. And two, she just got rid of brain cancer. <laughs> I'm going to ask her to grab a cell phone. 
So the next day comes, and I know she's in the hospital, but I try not to worry about it. And uh, midway through the day, I get a call from Dan, my stepdad. And he says, hello, Michael. And I said, hi, what's going on over there? And he says, uh, well, your mom's fine. You know, she's uh, she's resting. You know, she can't talk, obviously, but uh, they they went in this morning, and they, they, you know, locked her up, and they went in and blasted her, and everything's okay, and uh, we don't know. Now we just wait. We hope she's okay, but she's she's under, and she's recovering. She'll be fine. I said, well, you need me to come out there? You need anything? And he says, no, we're good. And he goes, I got, you know, I got a list of people to call. I said, great. I said, do you need me to call any before you? No, that's fine. All right, we'll take care. Hangs up. And uh, as days go by, my mom's released from the hospital. And when she can finally call me, I'm I'm worried because I don't know if it affected her. I don't know if it hit spots where she can't talk. And I don't know if she flinched or I, I no idea. So when she calls me, um, she sounds weary. Hello, Michael. Hey, Ma. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. I'm talking to you. Are you okay? Do, I, do we know if you're okay? She says, well, you know, my neck is real stiff and it's still sore. You know, but, uh, but I think I'm fine. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I said, well, when will we know? She goes, well, you know, they have to wait three months. I said, three months? It's ridiculous. She goes, yeah, I know. It's just, you know, you go in there and they, they what they have to do is they have to analyze more of the lymph nodes and they look at the rest of you and they do like a, a scan and, and then they have to, you know, the lesions were hit by the radiation and we have to wait three months and make sure they don't spread or grow or new ones don't arrive and that these are gone. So it's just a waiting game. So I said, well, what are you doing? Are you going to go back to Chicago? Are you going to stay in Florida with you? She was, well, I'm going to stay here because the doctors are here for now. Uh, but, you know, we've got to finish the house this summer. This is the last summer. We're, we're just about done. Got to finish the house and uh, and get it on the market so we can get down here to Florida. And, you know, I figure three months, the timing on that four months is uh, is enough to get through the summer and then be back down here in time. She goes, although I may see my my doctor in Chicago and I may see other doctors up there, but right now uh, I think we're safe to go home. I'm just going to recover a little bit and then we're going to leave and head back home. And I said, OK, I said, well, keep me posted and I love you and I'll call you. I'll find you. Um. So my mom's home is in Cole City, Illinois. That's where her house is. And so uh, they're just about done with it. She's been working on the inside, the interiors. And my brother, Scott, and his girlfriend, Catherine, have been going there while my mom's in Florida. And Dan's son has been coming in, and they've been doing all of this work inside the house, painting and taking rugs out and stripping. And my mom sorted through a ton of shit. And, and my mom is like a crazy hoarder. Like, a, like I, I wouldn't be shocked if my mom went into her basement and, uh, and, and she made her way through the labyrinth of newspapers and, and old jewelry and everything else that she has hidden. She went around the corner and found herself looking for something. I mean, it is just... <laughs> she will, there's a rip in the space-time continuum where my mom would find herself from 2011 looking for a necklace. I mean, really, they're both wandering in this basement. <laughs> and, then the, and then a minotaur shows up. I mean, I don't know how it fucking works. <laughs> Uh, boy, can you imagine if a minotaur got brain cancer? Oh. oh, my word. You can't put the halo on that head. That's a giant head. Uh, that's actually my favorite Aesop's fable. <laughs> the minotaur with brain cancer. <laughs> it's one of his less known ones. I won't lie to you. I mean, look, we all love the fox and the grapes. Certainly. <laughs> but the minotaur with brain cancer. Now there. That'll tug at your heartstrings. And teach you a lesson. <laughs> so uh, so my mom's sorting her basement and getting all the shit. My mom has a storage area that she puts all of her... Because my mom for years has been compiling... Uh, again, my mom's a hoarder. She goes on the Home Shopping Network, but she goes to estate sales. So my mom goes and bids on jewelry, like with a paddle and all that kind of stuff. My mom, because she's, she's waiting for the mother of all estate sales that she's going to have. She's bought all this old jewelry for years, statues and, and lawn ornaments and funky stuff. My mom... She doesn't just buy, you know, it's not like she's like, I only buy gold. My mom will buy a dragon. Like, I mean, it's that sort of thing where she sees something. She's like, that's fucking cool. And I'll bet somebody wants it someday. She'll buy a crystal ball or, or, you know, she owls. You know what I mean? Like, she'll just buy anything that she thinks looks really cool and might be collectible to somebody. My mom will pick it up. Uh, and so she's been doing that for years. And it was all in her house. And then she got a storage area. She put all the jewelry there and all these different things. And she's waiting because she's eventually going to have a giant estate sale before they go to Florida. To sell off all this stuff. And it is, like I said, some of it is funky and some of it is absolutely valuable. So uh, my brother and, uh, and my stepbrother have been doing work on the house. 
and they head back to Chicago, or they're going to head back to Chicago, I should say. And then the week before they go, a tornado hits Coal City. And uh, I call my mom. Because I mean, it hit at 10 o'clock at night. Like I, I heard about it the next day. And it was one of those things where I just heard tornadoes in Illinois and I didn't even fucking think about it. Uh, it hit Cole City where my mom's house is. And so I call her the next day and she's, uh, she says, yeah, we're packing to leave. And I said, well, I thought you were leaving next week. She goes, I can't now. She goes, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, the governor's declared Cole City a state of emergency. Um, I think Obama went to go look at it. He flew over in a helicopter. My brother goes because my mom calls him. Again, it's, it, it happens at like 10 at night. So my mom hears from one of her neighbors. Her neighbor's got a hole in her roof. Oof. Uh, when she heard that there was a tornado, they went into the, into the garage or the basement. And it's a good thing they did because the hole is over their bedroom. It's like literally their whole bedroom collapsed in. This woman's two doors down from my mom's house. <laughs> so my mom tells Scott and my, my stepbrother, they're like, you know, go check on what's going on so we know what we're getting into. Um, well, they go and they won't let them into the city because it is, a, it is an emergency disaster area. Nobody's allowed in, only residents. And they say my mom's, and they try to explain to the cops what's going on. And then finally they're allowed in. And they get to the house, and my mom, you know, uh, she's in Tennessee. I talked to her. She's on her way. They're driving from Florida to Chicago. So they uh, finally get there. And I don't talk to Scott. You know, I don't talk to Marty. But uh, I get my mom after a couple of days. And I told you, I've talked to my mom through two lung cancers. And I talked to my mom through brain cancer. And I've talked to her. And, I, and she's betrayed a little bit of weariness in her voice. Because, you know, it's been a hell of a two years had cancer three different times you need a hip replacement you need knee replacements you know you're, you're struggling just to walk around your home but you can't get that fixed until you get the rest of you fixed you know my mom she's she is the operation game board And you can't do one until you do the other two. It's that sort of thing. You know, she's got to pull the right card from the deck in order to, and she's got to do it all in order. So she gets back to Chicago and I give her a break. You know, I don't talk to her. I go, when you're, when you're there, I understand you're going to kind of hit the ground running or limping. So let me call you <laughs> and, and you call me and let me know what's happening. So after a few days, she's there and, and I, I go on to, I go on the, internet and I see I, I had no idea again I, I'd been there many times for Christmas and stuff I never I, I lived there for a short period when everything went to hell and I was dating a woman who burned my stuff set it on fire by year two <laughs> again these new people are here I gotta go ahead and plug it so uh, I, get, I call my ma and, uh, and I don't get a hold of her I let her and then she calls me um, so, I mean, I've been to that house. When I go on the internet, I look at the devastation and I, I, I mean, I can't find my mom's place, but I mean, I can see clearly where this pizza joint was and all these different things. My mom calls me after a few days and she's like, Hey kiddo. I said, Hey, what's my, how you doing? Oh, Mike, it's terrible. Michael, it's just awful. I said, well, I mean, are you okay physically? She goes, well, I'm not even, I'm not even thinking about that now. Just the house is awful. I said, well, what happened? She said, there's shingles torn off the roof, like all over the place. The, you know, the mailbox is gone. The garage door is destroyed. You know, Marty was there and he was trying to bang it with a sledgehammer to just so we could open it and get inside. We got to replace that. We got to replace the, the shingles and re-roof everything. Oh, Michael, the landscaping. My mom's a gardener. She loves her yard, always has. But when they moved to Florida, you know, they asked Scott to kind of tend it a little bit. But my mom has always planted trees and shrubs and, and flower beds and vegetables. And my mom, she would be happiest on her knees outside in the garden, covered in dirt, planting, tilling I rototilling, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know. It was the shit I never wanted to do, but she finds peace in it. And uh, it's gone. 
She said, I said, what? She goes, it's gone. The yard is gone. Trees that she planted 20 years ago that have grown, torn out, gone. And not even like they're laying there, taken away, gone. Shrubs, gone. All the rock beds and, and every, destroyed, everything. The backyard, bare. She said, it looks like it, it literally went around my house in a circle and destroyed all of the foliage and green and left it this vacant lot with a house in it that's kind of destroyed. And I'm like, well, what's the interior of the house? Like, she goes, well, the basement flooded, of course. But luckily, we had moved everything to the storage area, so it wasn't a big deal. The ba- I, I go, Jesus Christ, hold on a second. The basement is cleaned out? Because that makes no sense. She's like, no, we had made so much progress. We were done. We were done. And now we have to start over. And I can hear it. I can hear it in her voice. Because again, man, she's, she's dealt with cancer three times. A hat trick. A literal hat trick because the third one was in her head. <laughs> and now she's been waiting to sell this house for five years. They've been working on it and working on it and pacing themselves and working on it. And it's, and it's glacially paced because all they're doing is getting older. You know, 67-year-old Pat is not 72-year-old Pat. Knees go, hips go, cancer three times. I mean, she, she can even get up and down the stairs, let alone paint the fucking kitchen. And she'll never be able to redo the yard. She did that yard herself over, over the course of 25 years. And I can hear her just that, well, you know, all you can do is rebuild it. I said, well, rebuild what? She goes, the yard, all of it. She goes, we wanted to sell it. She goes, we can't sell this. I don't, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, I, I know. And she goes, all you can do is kind of go forward and, and fix it and build it. And, 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 but now the insurance company is hassling us and they're giving us a hard time and, and they don't want to talk about the landscaping and they're going to do the roof, but they can't cut a check yet. And she goes, Michael, I don't, I don't know when it ends. And I said, well, I, do you need me to come out there? She said, no, Scott's here and we're here and everybody's kind of pitching in and helping out. But oh, Michael, the storage area. I said, what about the storage area? She goes, well, it was hit and it's gone. I said, well, what's gone? The whole storage area is gone? She goes, no, it's worse. Someone went in and looted our storage area and oh. took everything. Oh, no. I said, how do, you, what do you, how do you know that that happened? She goes, because there were things in drawers, and the drawers are empty. So they had to open everything and go through it and take everything they wanted and then close the drawers behind them. The door was hurt and the lock was taken off and so they went in and sampled it and took everything they wanted to take. And everything I was going to sell, all my jewelry, for 20 years, it's gone. I, mean, I, don't, even, I don't even know what the fuck to say. You know, because I deal with my own bullshit on this show. I got this going on or that going on. I got this problem. I got a car. I'm just totaled. I don't, but you know what? I... I didn't have an uninsured motorist drive into my skull. <laughs> I didn't have some blonde fucking bimbo from Texas smash into my storage area and then steal my life's possessions. And I can hear her, man. She's just, she's just that... Because my mom's strong. She's fucking strong. And she's standing there staring into the abyss. And uh, I said, well, what are, what are we doing? Like, what are, and she goes, I, I don't know. All we can do is work on the house. And I said, well, what's your plan? Are you going to stay there now? And she goes, I don't want to stay here, but now I can't sell the house. We're going to put it on the market by the end of the summer. I still have to get back to Florida to see the doctors. I, you know, I still have my checkups and all of that to handle. And so we thought we were coming up here for three or four months to finalize everything and then go. Michael, why couldn't it hit the house? Mm. 
I said, I, I don't know. She goes, if it hits the house, it destroys the house. We get an insurance payment. I don't have to fucking put it on the market. Then I don't care that the yards were fucked up. I don't care even really about the storage area. Because I just walk out here with a piece of paper and I don't have to fucking look back. I said, I know, Ma. I know. And, uh... <laughs> In the next breath, she starts to tell me the good news, which is that nobody's hurt and nobody's dead, and she sees her neighbors, and she realizes the devastation they've experienced and how their houses are destroyed, and she got off light, and she's lucky. And it was that five minutes of of weariness, but then to see her just climb right back up on it and go, well, I'm better off than everybody else, and it's fine, and at least our house is still standing, and we'll go ahead and just put the roof up, and as soon as the insurance takes care of it, she's right back to being her. She took five minutes. In 72 years, my mom finally took five minutes to wonder why. But then she just went right back into being the person who went, you know what, we just take care of it. That's what you do. And uh, that's a trait I've not inherited from her, by the way. (laughs) Because I've been dwelling on that five minutes since I was 19. (laughs) Daddy's gone. But my mom is two-fisted and jut-jawed, and she's going to fuck up anything in her path. And so she was there all summer fixing the basement, and trying to get the roof squared away and getting the garage fixed. And uh, I can tell you now it's September and my mom is still fighting with the insurance company. There's a pile of shingles in her driveway that she's hoping will get on the roof before the winter comes. Uh, they did as much as they could with the landscaping. They fixed the garage door, I believe. Well, they didn't fix it. They've made it so it can open and close, but they have to replace it. And again, that's a check and a conversation and a bunch of bullshit that my stepdad and my mom are going through. But they're going through it. You know, they're on the phone every day, all day, with men in suits who try to tell people that their life's work cannot be funded by the money that they've put in over 30 years. Having just dealt with a car insurance company, I can't imagine how those people fucking sleep. You take people's money to insure them against disaster. When disaster strikes, you do everything you can to cut every single corner to keep from giving those people their money back. That's just inherently wrong. This is a 72-year-old woman who's had cancer three times in a year and a half, two years. And because there wasn't a T crossed or an I dotted, you're not going to get her roof fixed when a tornado hits it? Fuck you. Terrible people. But my mom, you know, she'll just tell me, hey, well, you know, fuck them. That's what insurance companies do. They're fucking vampires, just like lawyers. <laughs> but unfortunately, the problem is when an insurance company pulls their vampire bullshit and they won't give you a check, you got to call the other vampire, the fucking lawyer, to go after them. And then you just got two vampires fighting while you stand around and don't get anything fucking done. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure there's some sort of message to be gleaned from that, but all I can think about is vampire fight. How cool! <laughs> Mom, that's awesome! You might have just written an awesome movie! Vampire fight! Whee! I want to make a video game where a tornado hits a small town and a couple of vampires have to fight over the roof! Yeah, god damn it! Ding, 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 ding! Oh, God. So I, uh, I talked to my mom this week. I hadn't called my mom in a, a, well, I I should say I called my mom like two weeks ago and she didn't answer, which is really weird for her. I called her house first and I got an uh, endless busy signal, the house in Chicago. And then I called her mobile phone and it went right to her thing. So I was like, well, maybe they're out, you know, watching a vampire fight. I have no idea, (laughs) but I left a message and I didn't hear from her. So the next morning, my mom with no concept at all of time differences as she's never had, uh, calls me at 6.05 a.m. And I didn't, I, the, the phone is not, I didn't even, I just looked at it. And I went back to sleep. But then when I checked her voicemail, she's like, hi, it's uh, Michael. It's uh, Ma. Uh, I'm in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We just woke up. We're on our way to Florida. I didn't even know she had left uh, Chicago yet, by the way. I thought she was leaving a week later. She's like, no, we left Florida and uh, heading back. So call me when you get a chance. Uh, and I did not call, you know, because I figured give her time to drive and then get her to Florida and then get settled in and whatever the fuck she's got to do. So I let that slip for about a week. And then I got a call and I was like, oh, and I, I didn't want to answer it because I didn't want to own up to the fact that I hadn't called her. 
Hey, Michael, it's Ma. And just wondering where you are, kid. All right, give me a call. And I called her back in like five minutes. I go, Ma, <laughs> sorry. She's like, oh, that's okay. I go, no, I, I hate when you have to call me. You know that I don't like that. But I just, I was hoping you would get there and get settled and it kind of got away from me. I gave it a week instead of three days. Well, we're here now, you know, and I got an appointment with the doctor. And I go, well, when? When is that? She goes, well, that's next Thursday. I said, okay, and what are they doing? She goes, I don't know. She goes, it's the follow-up. You know, I, I went to go see my fucking oncologist and she's still got a baby or whatever. I don't even know if it's <laughs> still in her or it's out of her or it's in a crib. I don't fucking know. But apparently she can't see me. She's got to stay with it. So uh, she goes, I don't know why that woman just doesn't quit. And I'm like, well, well nobody leaves their life's work because they had a baby. And she's just like, well, I don't get it. If you're going to see patients, you're going to see patients. I got fucking cancer. You know, I, I understand you got a baby, but I, I got cancer. I'm like, I know. So she said she's going to see her and going to see the specialist and they have to analyze charts and graphs and find out what's inside of her head and see if it's come back. So I said, well, do you want me to call you or do you want me to call? And, and she says, no, it's not until Thursday. And I, this was on a Saturday. I'm talking to her. She's like, so I'll call you. But as soon as I know, you'll know. And I said, great. Keep me posted. I love you. So I wait a couple of days and in my head, I'm like, I should call her just to check in. And I go, eh, don't be that guy. Who calls his mom? Idiot. <laughs> and then uh, Tuesday, my mom calls. And as I've said, she doesn't call. So uh, I know she's not busting my balls. I had just talked to her and she wasn't getting her results till Thursday. So I answer. And I said, Hello. She said, Michael. And I said, hey, Ma. She said, good news, son. Good news. I said, good news. Why? And there was a brief second where I wasn't sure what the fuck it could possibly be about. <laughs> because she's not getting her results until Thursday. And there's so much bad news. I don't know what possibly could have had a 180 in a day. Did the tornado come back and drop all the jewelry off? I don't know. <laughs> good news, son. Good news. And I, I literally, I, uh, it, could, it could be anything. I, about what? She goes, well, apparently my oncologist finally found a goddamn babysitter. Because <laughs> she got me in early and, and everything is okay. I said, what, 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 I don't, what, what does that mean exactly? She goes, it's gone. They're gone. No more lesions. I said, no more lesions. She goes, no, the ones that were there were gone and there's nothing new. And I'm, I'm clear with the, the lymph nodes and everything, the lungs and, and I'm again, I'm cancer free. And I, I didn't, I, I don't even fucking know. I, you know, cause again, I've been told my mom's cancer free now three times in 18 months. Hmm. And while I can say it's, one of the most joyful sentences I get to hear from her. I'm also a little fucking tired of having to hear that sentence out of my mom. <laughs> so I kind of just, I went, I was like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm so happy, mom. I'm so happy. And you can't, there's no amount of words that can convey just how happy you are to hear that your mom's going to live. And she's like, well, I just wanted to let you know. And I said, well, Ma, thank you. I was going to call Thursday. And she goes, I know, but we found out early, you know, I, I don't know what the fuck happened, but she finally got in the office and then she got me in there. And I, I go, well, what's the procedure now? She goes, we go back in three months and it's going to be three months from here on out. And they look in there to make sure nothing's wrong. But I think I'm going to ask him to do a PET scan. And I said, what's that? And she goes, well, that's where they check your whole body. She goes, it's been in my lungs. It's been in my brain and it's not there anymore. But now, you know, I could be hiding in my fucking ankle. Like I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I went, well, what do you think? You think the radiation like made it scoot away and go down to your ankle? She's like, I don't know, honey. I, I got no idea. All I know is everything's fine now. Uh, and I'm going to call the other boys. I love you, son. And I said, I, I love you, mom. Thank you. I'm so happy. You know, you, I, it's crazy how happy she goes. I know it's great, right? It's so great. And uh, she hangs up to call my other brothers. And, uh, again, I, I, I have my own problems <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have been there to rally when the car went under and I, my job's ending and all this other bullshit, but none of it, it all pales. It all pales in comparison to the phone call from your mom telling you that she's going to live. And this is last week, Tuesday. 
and I was going to call her Thursday, and uh, I didn't. I, I gave her a few days because I, I didn't know what was going on now. You know, I mean, I she's fine. And so I talked to her Monday. We're recording this on Wednesday. I talked to her two days ago. And I called up, and uh, I got my stepdad, who unbelievably answered the phone. I, I like him. <laughs> he's just he doesn't have his hearing aid turned up. So he's just like, huh, what? I go, it's Mike. Hi, Dan. How are you? Oh, Michael, me boy. How are you? I go, I'm, I'm good. I'm trying to find your ma. I'm like, well, we can talk for a second if that's okay. <laughs> I know it's awkward and weird probably, but I have known you 30 years. It'd be nice to have a conversation. All right, hold on. Here she is. <laughs> awesome. Finds my mom in the sun porch, gives her the thing. And she's like, oh, it's so hot here, honey. How are you? How are you? I said, I'm good. What's going on? She goes, oh. I'll tell you what, I've been on the phone. I'm just I'm just trying to get everything all in, in a row. And I said, well, how's the house? Oh, fuck that. We're still battling with the insurance company. We got a pile of shingles that's not even going up yet. It's, you know, it's going to be October. It's going to be fucking cold there soon. They need to get that taken care of. I go, yeah, they do. I go, but the good news is you're in Florida and it's not cold. She goes, oh, it's 90 degrees right now, son. I said, ma, it's 830 by you. She goes, yeah, it's got to be 90 degrees. She goes, I've been on the phone all day. I'm just sitting on the sun porch on the phone and you know, I'm just, I'm just, I get to get my hips done and I get, I'm going to get my hip replacement and I get my knees and I go, whoa, hold on. What are you doing? And you're going back into fucking surgery so soon. She goes, I don't know how much time I have left. I want to get everything fixed while I can. <laughs> I love her. And I said, all right. I go, so what's first? And she goes, I think the hip and then the knees, but I'm going to let the doctor decide and we'll figure it out. But, uh, but it's all like dominoes falling now, you know, with the brain is fine. And I just want to get something done before three months. And they look at it and they tell me there's something else fucking wrong with me. So I go in. <laughs> And get this taken care of. I said, all right, well, keep me posted. If you need me down there, or you need a walker with tennis balls. She goes, ah, fuck you. I don't need a walker. I said, all right, ma. She goes, but honey, I think I might need a walker. I'll tell you what. And I go, I know you do, ma. You got stairs. because I can't, I can barely go up and down stairs. I go, no, I know, I know. <laughs> so she says, well, I, you know, I should tell you something. I, I've been, I've kind of been avoiding telling you this. And I said, oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, no. What, what are they cutting into now? And she laughs. She goes, ah, shut up. She goes, no, I just, I just got to tell you, it's, it's just, I'm just happy that I get to make these plans. And I ha- I'm happy I, I'm, I'm getting to talk to you. And I said, well, I, I'm happy too, Ma. I love you. I'm glad everything's good. And she said, well, you know, I didn't tell you this, but I, you know, I didn't tell anybody. Uh, when, they, when they found the lesions on my brain, they told me I had a year. I said, really? She goes, yeah, they said they had a year, maybe a year and a half. So just to be able to sit here and make plans to do other things, it's just a gift. It's amazing. And I never thought I'd have that opportunity. And I said, well, Ma, I'll be honest with you. You know, in the beginning of the summer when you went home, you said, uh, you asked if I had plans to come by. And I said, I would. And uh, you were dealing with the tornado. But then you kept saying, I need to see all my boys. I need to make sure I see all my boys. And so we all kind of knew something was up. You know, we weren't going to ask. She goes, well, I wasn't going to fucking tell you. And I go, why? I get that. I go, but Ma, you got to tell me that stuff. She goes, why? So then you just worry about it? She goes, you know, I I was told and I went through a countdown and I thought about it and I just wanted to make sure I saw you boys before anything happened. And I go, yeah, but we could all be there for you and go through the countdown with you. She goes, why? So what? So we all wait for me to fucking die? It's like ridiculous. (laughs) And I said, I know, but... You got to tell us that stuff. You can't hide it. I go, because honestly, we knew. We all pretty much knew anyway. She goes, well, I, you know, I said, so don't hide stuff like that going forward. I mean, it's just, you know, we know it's brain cancer. We know it's serious. She goes, yeah, it's serious. So why do I have to give you a number? And that made sense. Because <laughs> she could have died the next fucking day, 18 months or 18 minutes. Who knows? Brain cancer. If, you, if it happened, you were ready for it. So as much as I wanted to know, I guess I'm glad I didn't know. So she says, hey, I got to talk to you about something. I said, oh, Christ. Okay, (laughs) what? She goes, you talk fast. And I said, well, yeah, I've always talked fast. I go, what 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 does that mean? Like on this phone call, I talk fast? And when did you get so dirty? (laughs) Oh, no. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, I listened to that show. I said, what'd she go? She goes, I've listened to all your shows. I said, you're listening to the podcast? She goes, yeah, I am. When did you get so fucking dirty? (laughs) And boy, you talk fast, Michael. Boy, do you talk fast. They go, Ma, I've always talked fast. They go, I kind of, that's the funny joke about the show. It's I used to use the tagline, talking at the speed of your head. 
She goes, well, your head must be fucking fast because you talk fast. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I know. I, I, that's just kind of how it is. And she goes, but when did you get so fucking dirty, Michael? I go, well, I say the F, I, the, and then literally I, go, I say the F word sometimes, ma. And, <laughs> and she goes, no, that's not what I'm talking about. She goes, you talk about dirty stuff. <laughs> I said, I talk about everything, ma. She goes, yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. That's, you got to watch that. And she tried to listen once before, like, you know, four years ago. And she got, she was in tears because of something I said. She called me. She's like, you can't talk like that about people, Michael. They're going to get mad. They're going to, oh my God, who, what's going to happen? I said, fucking nothing. Believe me. And four years later, nothing still. She said, well, I don't know. I don't know why you got to be so dirty. You know, she goes, you just, if you just clean it up a little bit, she goes, you could, you know, you should be, you should be on radio. And I, I just didn't have the heart to tell her that radio is as dead as her cancer. <laughs> Believe me, if anything in this conversation has 18 months to live, <laughs> it's fucking terrestrial radio. She goes, you got to watch that. You know, you're kind of dirty and you talk real fast. And I said, well, I, I kind of do. And I, I said, I can't believe you're listening. She goes, oh, I've started listening. She goes, I listened the past few months. I said, well, I'm, I'm glad, but it's going to be a fast talking, dirty show. She goes, well, I love you, son. You know that. I said, I know. And she goes, I always knew. I always knew. You know that. I go, I know, Ma. You always knew. She goes, all right. Well, I'll talk to you next week. I said, well, I'll call you this weekend. I love you. I love you. Bye. And uh, I laughed when I hung up the phone because in my head I just thought of her sitting down looking through a catalog of knees, <laughs> sorting through a sales flyer of hip replacements. listening to me stick my cock in a cake. <laughs> and I laughed to myself because, you know, I, I said earlier in the show, when you think you're going to lose somebody, you want to hear from them. So I called my mom because I never knew if I wouldn't have the opportunity again to hear her voice and hear her say things to me. And now I know my mom felt the exact same way about me. So whether she talked to me on the phone or she listened to me through her iPod, my mom wanted to make sure that she connected with me and heard my voice as much as she possibly could. Now, she may have thought I was dirty. <laughs> and uh, she may think that I talk real fast. <laughs> and I said earlier in the show, we had a new listener. I mean, I've got a bunch of new listeners, I think. <laughs> because of the LA Podfest, but I know for sure I have one definite new listener. <laughs> so to that new listener, if you somehow made it through me talking about my cum chair, <laughs> I want to say I love you. And the rest of you guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. <laughs> You can find me at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can get me at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Follow me on there. Our friend David Hernandez does all of the audio work, the, uh, the music, and the artwork for this show. He's amazing. You can find him at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. You can go ahead and find him also at ArtByDMH.com. He's got his Valscapes. He's got his Guy Cons, and he will do personalized work for you if you want to contact him at uh, David at artbydmh.com. Go ahead and write him personally, and he will take care of all of the things that you need for a fee. Uh, but contact him, and he can do that. Or you can buy some existing artwork. If you see a piece you like, let him know, and he'll sell it to you. That's the kind of guy he is. Although I just found out oil paintings take four months to dry or whatever the fuck. So <laughs> if you order, and that's not even a joke, like if you order something that he's just recently done, he'll ship it to you in time for Christmas next year, I guess. <laughs> Sounds like a Ponzi scheme, really. Yeah, I saw that picture. I like it. Well, okay, why don't you send me 70 bucks? Okay, fantastic. All the 70 bucks is light. Send me 370 bucks. Okay, I'll send it to you in a year when it dries, wink. Um, uh, our friend, of course, Ryan Dirks does all of the, the web work for the show. You can contact him at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. I need to contact him at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. He's got stuff to do, and he hasn't done it, but I haven't told him to do it yet, so why the fuck would he do it? <laughs> Uh, and of course, that right there is our producer, Lily Von Stupp. You can uh, 
who I need to do this show. You know, every week I'm in a basement or I'm somewhere else, but I, I always feel at my best when I'm sitting across from uh, the woman who makes it happen, Lily Von Stupp. You can find her at facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp. You can find her at several different Twitter accounts, twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp, twitter.com slash MNTs, and twitter.com slash Hollywood BQ Fest. Um, but if you'd like to write her a personal note... <laughs> And uh, see if she can give you the names of a couple of girls to work for cheap. <laughs> you can write her at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com. Want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the Three Clubs on Vine at Santa Monica. Actually, you know what? It's on Santa at Vine Monica. Yeah, I apologize. No, I think it's at Monica Vine on Santa. No, it's on Vine at Santa Monica. You, you should, I wish, literally, I wish I could have bottled the face you made and given it to people to give to their enemies. Siri, that was... <laughs> <laughs> it was such a look of disgust and really idiot you're gonna do that now well, it was it's so it's the three clubs on vine at santa monica I, again there's new people listening i can't mess up the address i don't want to do that well, then just give it out it's one one two three vine street one one two three vine street that's vine at santa monica and it is it's literally you know a quarter block off of santa monica you can't miss it there's a We're taco nice truck the gas station and the taco truck yeah directly across the street from an army surplus store so please taco. Tacos. Who likes tacos? Everybody. Apparently, Fran Drescher does. So uh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, God, you know, I wanted to fucking rail Fran Drescher for the longest time. I have no idea why. It's just there was that thing about I her. I don't have a cock, and I wanted to put it in my in her mouth to shut her up. No, it's not. No, it wasn't a quiet thing. No, because I I would like do that in my fucking ear. I mean, seriously, Bray Yay! just. <laughs> oh my god, that feels so good. <laughs> Fuck ever. that. I want her braying in my ear like the Indian from the funny company. Let me have it. <laughs> Brr, <laughs> ha, done. That, and believe me, and it, won't even, it won't be this. It won't be ha, ha, ha. It'll just be ha. It'll be just like one long fucking noise until like literally she just cries. Oh um, <laughs> so yeah, that was, I don't know. I don't even know why. It was like the weirdest thing. It's like I, I had a crush on Sally Field when I was like 14 because she was in a movie called Backroads with Tommy Lee Jones and she played a hooker. And uh, I don't know why, but there's one scene where she's barefoot and like walking. And in my head, I, I literally... At that moment, I felt love. I know it sounds stupid, but at, at 14, I just went, huh, oh, what's happening? Oh, my God. That's it wasn't no bullshit because it was higher than my cock. It was in my stomach. That's what I mean. It's like, as if it was your cock. The bulls hadn't dropped yet. Incorrect. <laughs> they, are, they totally dropped. Oh, my God. They were so dropped. I got photos to prove it. No, I. <laughs> But I was like, it was this weird thing because I saw an, I saw a, a double header, a double feature at the Bolingbroke Plit, and I watched Backroads with Sally Field and Tommy Lee Jones, and uh, she's in like jean shorts and she's barefoot, and I remember I, I I dreamed about her that night, and I was like sick, like I was like, oh oh, what's that? Oh, I was like, I couldn't move. I had this weird sick feeling in my stomach and my heart, and I don't know why I loved her. She was so goddamn cute. It's ridiculous, and I've never watched it since because I don't want to because I don't want to I don't want to ruin it because I have that memory of being thirteen and just going oh oh. <laughs> I did it a lot when I was 13. Um, so, where were we? We're at, your, we're at your show. We're at the three clubs on Vine and Santa Monica watching the Monday Night Tees every Monday night. It's the greatest burlesque show in the history of Los Angeles County. Nay, Los Angeles City. Nay, the state of California. Nay, the world! She'll tell you. I don't know. That's good. You should have seen your blues pop. Um, what? Your blues. The lines in the little fucking... Oh, I, I, I said your blues. <laughs> Your boobs pop. Yeah, you should have seen that. Oh, my God. When I say in the world, my boobs pop? Yeah, okay. that's how it works. Um, so who? let me ask you this. How was the show this week? Yeah, first of all, I happen to know the producer of that show. She is the producer. She is the guru. She is the media expert. She is the social media manager. She is everything you need to know about that show and more. And she is my great friend and the producer of this podcast, Lily Von Stupp. Hi, Lily. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Fantastic. Can you tell me a little bit about this week's Monday Night Tees? First of all, I would say I'm very happy about your mom. So am I. <laughs> we hadn't talked about it off air, and I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know, you know, I don't like to bring up per- people's personal demons. So I well, she didn't want, and it's funny, because she never. She that. She's like, she won't really talk. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to pester you. If you need something, you'll ask. Well, you knew she'd been diagnosed. We talked about yeah. that. But I never told you anything about her treatment or anything that was happening. Um, because she's very, she's private and I'm, she's yeah. not going to be happy about this fucking week. Cause she didn't give me permission to do this either. Uh, you um, know, you, you're her son. You're part of her, the, you know, sharing, sharing your stories or what you do. And well, she's uh, amazing. And, well, new yeah. people, I'll just tell you this. Cause this literally, I, I went in here with no, I didn't know what I was going to, I never really know. I have all the general idea of what I'm going to talk about. And I'll talk a little bit later here about what I was going to talk about for the whole show. <laughs> yeah, I'm an idiot. Talk about that at all, but well, it's funny. Cause that was just born out of the fact that my mom's listening. Yeah. Like I, I, in my head here, it's not like I came in prepared to do that. I was just going to mention the fact about her. She's like, you talk fast. And once you get so dirty, like literally that was all I was going to tell you. And then we, everything else happened so that we found, we want our, we found our way there. Um, that was legal pad number 14 that we got to, and we went ahead and found everything on there. (laughs) I wish there were legal pads on the table. I don't know how you remember what stuff is. Uh, I, I don't, it's, it's rough. It's weird. It's like, you know, I, I, I do. And then, uh, and then I talk and I, but I'll tell you this when I was researching, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, so let's talk about the Monday Night Tees. The Monday Night Tees was great. Um, it was wonderful. Uh, Prince Poppycock sang a couple new numbers. That dude's always there now. Uh, he's the host of the third Tees at threes. He's there once a month now. Okay. Um, yeah. We're, and we're delighted to have him. He's a wonderful performer. I'm not gonna, yeah. You know, if you, if you saw AGT, he was the first runner up. He's amazing, amazing opera. I'm sorry. What is, what do we see? Uh, America's Got Talent, AGT. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you said no. AZT. And I'm like, wait a minute. I, That's different. <laughs> it's That's clearly different. different. Um, but if he was first runner yeah, up in so, that. Yeah, he was performing. There were there were wonderful performances all, all night long. Um, Hot Cock performed. He's a, a, a burlesque performer. He's a boylesque performer. He's a, a trained dancer, performance artist. I mean, he, he's gotten grants to do dance productions. 
He stripped as Mr. Rogers. Under under his real name, I would assume? Yeah, under his real name. <laughs> but I mean, he, he stripped as Mr. Rogers. You know, okay. the sweater, the shoes, the whole nine yards. And I, I can't his, see the Outer Meridian Institute granting a grant to uh, Hot Cock. Well, sometimes they do. I mean, there's a lot of people I know who do sex work and stuff like that that get grants from creative arts to do stuff to support political change. So, I mean, it does happen, but I, I believe it's under his real name. <laughs> <laughs> so he did that and he did Mr. Rogers strip and it was, it was wonderful it was, a, it was a great show all around I really enjoyed it nice it and, uh, and who's coming up this week uh, this Monday we have Beauties which Beauties. is the all classic burlesque show um, Mr. Hollywood burlesque Kirby La Brea will be performing for the first time since he won his title at Monday Night Tees nice uh, Malice and Claire will be there Ruby Champagne Mexican Spitfire burlesque she's performing just all great all classic numbers. It's going to be really fun. Fantastic. Really forward to it. So that's Monday nights at 10 yeah. o'clock. Yeah. And then we've got uh, Velvet Tom coming back. So if you're interested in a lounge singer that has his current wife and his ex-wife performing with him and the hilarity that ensues having them both as backup singers, uh, wonderful cabaret show. So there's his, his ex-wife and his current wife and he's kind of in the middle? Yeah. He's, uh, I, you know what I call that? Angry what? Oreo. <laughs> Neither of them are of color. Whoa, you went there. I did. Literally in my head before I said it, I go, people are going to think I mean that. Yes. And I did not realize the person in this room would think well, I meant that. When I think Oreo, I, that's what you think of, unfortunately. I don't think it's racist, but it's like two blacks and a white. I certainly don't think, I don't think of Oreo cookies as ex-wives. You don't? No, I, I think of them as a colorful analogy. I see. Well, I don't know. Was your current wife and ex-wife made of chocolate? Hang tight. I'm, <laughs> I want to see just exactly how long you're going to spin your wheels on trying to get out of this motherfucking thing. I'm not getting out of it. I'm just trying to figure out what chocolate and creamy center has to do with you and your ex-wife. I, ex, I'm sorry, plural? I, you, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> no, I'm talking about them right there. That's angry Oreo because there's like there he's in between it and there's anger right there. I guess I guess I don't know what else you want to you call it. All right, well, let's go peanut butter and jelly then. Let's look at it this way. It'd be, it's like peanut butter and rage. That's what I call peanut it right there. Peanut butter and rage. That's I buy. what their band is. I bought. <laughs> I bought. Um, actually, I don't buy any of it. No. But Angry Oreo is a great name for a band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then you had to constantly explain we're not of color, apparently, if they're going to be booked in your club. But, well, here's um, the thing, though. You saw a, um, a Star is Born. Yes. Okay, they were called the Oreos. It was Barbara Streisand white in the center, and her two backup singers were of color. Yes. So that's the visual that came to my mind. As well. I see. All right, we were going different ways. I just, so, I was yeah, just, I'm just, just talking cookies. You, 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 you just had a food analogy. You <laughs> I literally did. only had a food analogy. That's all I have. I had a musical and a food analogy. Oh, a fat guy on microphone just goes straight for the Sorry. cookies. So anyway, Beauties is classic burlesque show and it's going to be wonderful. Sounds good. Sounds fun. If you guys want to go to join the uh, Monday Night Tees Facebook, go to facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees and uh, you can go ahead and follow all of the shows that are coming or going and see all the naked pictures, see all the beautiful ladies from the, oh, uh, from the yeah. beauties, certainly. You want to check them out. And then shows in the past, shows in the future. Uh, I, I keep looking out the window because someone just threw something off the balcony and it plummeted. It was like, literally, I was just like... I thought it was a child from the shadow. I wanted to check my stocks. Like, literally, <laughs> I didn't know... I don't know. I mean, I, I have no idea. I just saw somebody plummet past my window, and I was like, holy fuck, either Mad Men's on, or I've got to go ahead and sell Amalgamated Iron. Uh, Do you still have Amalgamated Iron? Uh, I'm going to make a phone call after that. I don't know. They may have plummeted. <laughs> I've got everything I own in Amalgamated Iron. And some of it in Amalgamated Mango. Um, I only invest in Amalgamated companies. So so go to Facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees and become a friend of the page, a, a member and you can see pictures of upcoming shows, pictures of people who've been there, pictures of from upcoming shows. It's going to be amazing. All the nudity you could possibly handle on Facebook. That's not nude. Uh, yeah, that's why I said on Facebook. You know, it's <laughs> Facebook nudity, quote unquote, pasties and nonsense. Pasties uh, and nonsense. That's going to be the title of my book. Well, that's yeah. It's coming up in November, though, right? That's another pasties show at the tease. Nonsense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so please go ahead and join that and come to the show and buy tickets. Go to brownpapertickets.com and go ahead and buy. What do you make? What? 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 That would be you hosting pasties and nonsense. Pasties and nonsense. All right. Uh, nonsense with Mike Schmidt. Lose the pasties, <laughs> and I'm in. Uh, so, uh, what I'm saying to you is if you go to uh, the show, that's fantastic. Go to brownpapertickets.com and buy tickets to go to the show. Search uh, Monday Night Tees or search Lily Von Stupp, and you will see all the shows that are upcoming. Do you have any gigs on the road you want to plug coming up? Um, yeah, I just got a video sent to me that my name is 
on flyers and posters in the Gold Coast because I am one of the headliners for the Las Vegas Burlesque Festival, October 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Congratulations to you. They're on Groupon right now, so you can get cheap tickets if you want to find it. It's the Las Vegas Burlesque Festival, and I believe it's I believe it's LasVegasBurlesqueFestival.com. It could be LV... No, it's Las Vegas for Last Festival. Well, let me stop you again. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. I'm that you're one of the headliners. That's really cool. Because usually. Emceeing and performing. So you're emceeing. It'll be great. Dude, that's fucking fantastic. Yeah, I'm excited. You should be. So that's Lily. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's great. So if you if you follow Lily on Twitter or you become her friend on Facebook, all of that needs stuff, that's where you'll get information about her and her career. Uh, but like I said, you can go to. Um, it was the real gr- gigs. The real career. Yeah, the real <laughs> stuff that's <laughs> happening. Uh, stop your nonsense. I'm teasing. No, it's wonderful. Headlining at a festival. It should it's be. It's a huge venue. It's an amazing stage. I'm, I'm going to be there with legends and amazing performers from all across the country. October 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th? Yeah. All right. So that's at the Gold Coast in Las Vegas, and you go to uh, Las Vegas Burlesque Festival. Just Google that. We don't have the actual address off the top of our heads, but Google that. You'll find it, and you'll find her, and it'll be amazing. Uh, you can go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com for all yeah. sorts of cool stuff. Right now, um, yeah, as you know, it's the stuff we, we had. Uh, new people, I can tell you to go there. My CD, The Big Angry, that was recorded live in San Francisco a couple of years ago, is available. And uh, we're putting together stuff for a new one eventually. We'll see what happens. Download sets are available. Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, and year seven of this show are available. Actually, one through six are available right now. Seven's still lurking on my computer. I haven't contacted Ryan. I know it's because it takes like fucking 31 hours to upload it. It's ridiculous. Um, and I should just set it and forget it, Popeil style. You know what I mean? But instead, I just fucking forget it instead of setting it. Um, but I have to upload because I have the artwork and everything. I got to get Ryan on that. And I know, I know. It'll it's just. Well, you saw my computer fucking freeze when I downloaded a PowerPoint thing. I mean, like, why the fuck did that freeze? I don't well, even know. Because people who still use PowerPoint are. Well, it's because well, again, if I just turn the computer on, you'd hear it go. It has this fucking death rattle. So I'm like, oh, crazy. I'm just waiting. <laughs> Not yet. You don't use a motor. Yeah, I'm gonna kick back to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, that's that's the only way to get it to stop freezing. I've asked it to do way too much. Um. So at MikeSchmidtComedy.com, on the, you know, and I'll tell you what, if you're new, look at the whole website because it's fucking amazing. David Hernandez did all the artwork for it, and there's all sorts of cool pages. Uh, but the Joe Business page is where all our merch is, is ensconced. And uh, you want to go ahead and buy T-shirts. We have the Yurt Dirt Dirt shirt, and those are at a cut rate right now. And I've sent all of your shirts out. Anybody ordered, it's on the way, even in Norway. And, uh, and I, I think someone, one to Norway, I sent one to Denmark, uh, which was weird. I should just send it to Norway and said, throw it across the fucking river. I mean, you know, send it, <laughs> do something. Put it on an ice floe and push it. I'm sure it'll find him eventually. There's only two of you over there, right? Um, so I sent that out. And also what's funny is I, I think the guy in, in Norway ordered a size I didn't have anymore. Like he wanted a large and I'm out of men's larges. So I sent him an extra large and I wrapped up my CD in it. And I said, I hope this is enough to like say sorry. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. So I threw the CD in for free. Um, that's what my comedy has become, by the way. A spiff. A spiff when the shirt's too big. Mm-hmm. Your shirt's too big. Here, take some words. Here, enjoy this anger. Uh, so also, we have the download from last year's PodFest. If you if you just found out who I am this year and you want to see what I was like last year at the PodFest, we've got Schmidt Alive 2, which is available. It's the audio and video package. You can download that, and it's available now. And uh, it's only available for a short time because I'm waiting to get the files from this year's PodFest. And I'll tell you what, I don't even know if those are going up. i got to listen to them and make sure that they're worth it. The show was great. I fucking destroyed it. But at the same time, I, you know, who knows? I got to read. That's the thing. I got to hear it and hear if it's okay. You can't hear if it's pushed record. No, no. I, I literally got the audio file just now. I mean, like, so I you did not, get the file. Yeah. When we were, when, just before so I wanted to record it, just before I wanted to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees, I checked my email and it was there. Um, so as long as you know, I have that. Uh, but it's not, it's not for sale yet. But I will tell you this. These are, these are important things really quickly. You can donate to the show. Uh, one-time donations, or uh, you can subscribe to the show, $2, $5, $10, $25 a month. Those are great. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. That's so cool. Uh, Also, you can use our Amazon logo link. That's also on the Joe Business page. Click on the Amazon logo. It takes you to our store. Then click through our store. Go to actual Amazon. Do some shopping. And uh, anything that you want, we get a cut of. And that's really neat of you to think of us. Thank you so very much. And those of you that do use it, you're so great. Because people are still using it every month. And that really helps. Thank you. And uh, also... Please remember that tweakedaudio.com is our friend, Yay! and you can go there and use all sorts of stuff from them. And uh, what was it, Amazon? And there was another thing on that page that I wanted. I was just about to talk about. Right. The donations, uh, CDs, download sets, T-shirts. Uh, I guess Amazon. Amazon's the big one. That was the one I wanted to make sure you knew about. Hold on. We're getting a phone call. That's ridiculous. You didn't turn your silencer on? Huh? You didn't put your phone on. 
phone on vibrate? Nobody fucking calls me. I do. <laughs> well, you're here. What the fuck? If you call me in the middle of the show, right. we got a goddamn problem. Nobody else is calling. Uh, I think I'll do it right now just to see if it's on vibrate. You know, I, I am so sure that that is a bill collector. And I almost, to the point where I should have answered it on the air. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Uh, so go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and check out the Joe Business page and all sorts of cool stuff there is to uh, Oral for Sale and Schmidt Alive too, And all of it is there. And thank you for everybody who financially supports the show. You're so great. We appreciate it. Um, last week was the Los Angeles Podcast Festival, which was last uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I was lucky enough to perform in that. And uh, I, I, the show was really good. It should be available soon. If I'm going to put it up, I don't know if I am. But uh, I wanted to thank everybody who came out to the show. And, and you know, in the beginning, here's a, I went on stage and, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what it was going to be. I, I was sort of sure, but then you kind of make it up in the moment. And by the time when I, when I first got on stage, it was like, a you know, the crowd was a little thin, in my opinion. You know, it was, it was a little short. And I was like, oh, man. But it's because people were still down at the fucking drink yeah. and thing. By the time I finished, the room was like three quarters full, which was really nice. Um and so I did my show and it was great. And then afterwards I come walking off stage and there's Chris Mancini, one of the organizers of the festival, and he's filming me with his phone. And he's like, great job. I go, hey man, thanks. And I look at him and I go, wait a minute, are you filming me with your phone? Are you taking a picture? And he goes, live stream went down. And I was like, oh, fuck. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with any of that bullshit. I mean, I can't even imagine the headache. You know, you put on a festival. Oh, it's awful. So you're just dealing with everything coming at you in fucking waves. And so they're sitting there. I'm literally the first performer of the festival. Me, Dave and Greg in another room and Doug in another room. And this live stream goes down right when it all starts. And, uh, and the funny thing was I had been getting texts and tweets or not texts, uh, emails and tweets from people overseas who've never seen me, who listen to the show, like our friend Liam in Ireland. Uh, and our friends Ken and uh, what was the other name? Thomas in England and uh, our friend Neil in Scotland. And uh, these people wrote and they were like, oh, my God, so excited to stay up and watch you uh, tonight slash this morning. And every time they wrote me, I would write back, I am so looking forward to disappointing you. Like that was my stock goofy answer. Yeah. And then they sit down at 8 a.m. or whatever. And I'm not I'm not there. I'm not even. on. So it's like the website's not there. I know the whole thing disappeared. <laughs> So it was just this funky, self-fulfilling prophecy of I can't wait to disappoint you, along with the henchmen from the fucking L.A. Podfest who made sure, because these people paid. They bought a fucking live stream, and, uh, and I mean, I don't even know how it's going to be fixed. I got no clue, because, you know, when people used my code, I got money for whatever, and I don't know if, I'm, I don't know if they're taking it out of all of our money. I, I have no idea what's going to happen, because I don't know how many people used my code. You know, I didn't know last year until I got my check, and I was, you know, kind of pleasantly surprised because I only had a couple of weeks to, pl- to plug it. Um, but then I had people come up to me all, all I, well, I should tell you this. I did my show Friday was amazing. Friday was an amazing night, uh, because I did my show and, uh, and walked around and talked to people and hung out and, and then, uh, in between the show, I went to dinner with, uh, people I love. It was just incredible. I, I, I was still high from performing and then we all made our way over to the restaurant and uh, it was the lovely Jill and uh, and Lily was with me and Ted lied and Kyle Dodson and Pat Francis and Paul Gilmartin and and Tyler Smith from Battleship Pretension and Mike Siegel from Travel Tales and great friends who came they, and they all came to my fucking show. They were just like at the festival and went, hey, what do you want to do? These are my friends. Some of them I've been friends with for 15 years. Some of them I've only known a few years. Uh, Ted, I haven't seen in forever. And he came out and he tells me, he's, hey, I've been listening to your podcast. And I said, oh, my God, why? You know, I mean, because I'm that guy. <laughs> and he's like, uh, no, what you do is really, you know, I'm, I'm into it. I like Ted as his own podcast, which I'm actually now doing tomorrow. Uh, but it was so important to me. You know, it's important. To, you know, I had Ron and Chris and my friends and fans, Heidi and Mel, and everybody, everybody came out to the show. And it was so important. I loved it. I'm so happy that you guys came. And then to have my personal friends come watch me. Because you know me, I sit in an apartment and I whine about my fucking job and my car and all these things and I start to lose sight. I get very myopic and I'm like, well, I got to make my nut or I got to make this money or I got to go here. I gotta... But there's, there's a huge fucking world out there. I mean, I've, I've carved out a niche, certainly, but I also have friends beyond that niche that I never see. And so it made me go, man, it's the thing and I'm reinfected and I tell you all the time, I got to get out there. I got to get out there. <laughs> and Friday was another of those nights that made me go, I got to get out there because not only was my show fantastic and my friends came and saw it. So they saw me kill, but then we all went to fucking Chinese food and we're laughing at P.F. Chang's and that photo you took is fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> did it wind up? On, I don't know if it wound up on my timeline or not. I tagged you so it 
should be. Okay, it's on Facebook, and Lily put it up, and it's just. Did not share it. But I, the problem is, I'm not friends with some of them, so I can't tag them. Understood, but so. I, maybe I'll go in and tag them. Yeah. But it just, it's just a photo that Lily took of from the head of the table out, and you see us all leaning in, and uh, and it's just, just this pile of fucking love and talent and I was so thrilled that everybody came out and it was so fun so after dinner we head back over to the Podfest and we're there to see the Earbuds podcast documentary which I was filmed for and I didn't know if I was going to wind up in it I didn't know how much of me was going to be in it I had no idea what was going to happen so sure enough I, I walk in and the people are already lined up to go into the screening you know screening starts in like half an hour so they're lining up to fill the room and uh, a guy comes up to me and he goes hey Mike and I go hi I'm Mike and he goes I know I'm Keith I go hi Keith and I'm used to that because people know me but I don't know them but I initially I always say hi I'm Mike just to make sure and he goes I know I'm Keith and I go oh and he goes we met I said okay and he goes I'm the producer one of the producers of the film I said oh that's nice cool I, I, and, I, and he goes listen to me I just want to tell you, you are the fucking greatest. And I, I went, oh, well, good. I'm glad. He goes, no, I, I just, I cannot wait. Literally, I'm excited for the premiere and I want it to debut and I want everybody to see it. He goes, but I'm excited for you to see it. You have to see it. I went, oh, okay. And he goes, I'm just, I just, and he said some other things that I'm not going to go into here because it's, he was very nice to me. Uh, and I went, yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm jerking off, but I mean, he was just <laughs> super cool. And so I said, okay, great. Well, now I'm excited. You know, and I was excited anyway, but I wasn't sure. And then I'm standing there and we're all kind of milling about and they start seating people and a woman comes up to me and she goes, you're Mike. <laughs> and again, this happens at podcast festival because again, people hear me, but I don't meet them. And, you know, and it's like when, and Michael and Debbie Webb were there, you know, and they, I saw them and I knew them by face and by name and I knew Ron and Laura and I just know people because you see them, you get to see them every year. Now it's kind of an annual event. It's fun. Uh, and I met Elisa. I met, you know, I met nice people. I met, I met George and I met Will. I met all these cool people. Um, but this woman came up to me and she goes, I, you're Mike. And I go, I, absolutely. I'm Mike, you are. And she said, I'm Tina. I said, hi, Tina. She goes, I'm the editor of the film. I said, great. She goes, I just want to tell you that your segment is unbelievable. I said, oh, I'm glad. She goes, well, no, you, you gave us everything we needed. So when we're editing, you know, I watch the footage over and over and I never didn't watch you I said well that's very nice and then she said some other things and everything was cool so then we went and watched the movie and uh, everybody in it is amazing I'm very happy my friends are all in it Paul Gilmartin is in it a ton and Todd Glass is in it and Mark Maron of course and Chris Hardwick uh, Jimmy uh, and, and Matt are in it um, Matt should have been talked to a lot more quite frankly in my opinion but again it's not my movie uh, but then for some reason I'm in it a bunch like there's a segment about me and then there's a segment later about me and then there's another segment about me and then they used me in another segment about somebody else. Like just this weird, and I, I, I can't thank Chris and Graham enough for, for not only asking me to be involved but then using so much of me uh, in a project that was really close to their hearts and they're friends of mine and they've been friends for a long time. Chris started booking me in 1999 when I first moved here. He booked me at a Borders bookstore when he was booking a show and he thought I was funny then. And so now 16 years later, he puts me in his movie, another movie, he put me in Asylum. I mean, it's just, it's incredible to have friends who, uh, who are willing to include you in their special projects. I mean, I, I wrote that on Facebook the, that night. I came home and I was fucking wired. You have a question? Well, I feel this same way when I'm involved in projects, but I, I always say the same thing to people when I book them. I, I, I put people where they belong because their talent means that's where they should be. Your story in that movie was really compelling because your life is. Thank you. You I don't mean, just yeah, have I... to thank your friends. You have to thank your friends for knowing well enough to see that this is an important thing to talk about and that you are important to talk about. So, I mean, see that side of it and realize that you're there because you're fucking good. Yeah, well, I, I, I know that. Okay. I mean, well, I, I know I I'm good. I I needed <clears> to say that. Thank you. That's super cool, and, and, and it's nice of you. Hi, who are you? Hi, I'm Mike. <laughs> I love that I actually shook your fucking hand like an idiot. So whenever it ends, whenever the, so the screening ends on Friday night, and I'm, I'm floating. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I got big laughs in, in my parts, and we walk out into the hallway, and, and 
everybody was very nice. People looked at me, sought me out, came up to me and went, I don't know you at all. And I go, I'm Mike. And they're like, I know, but that was so good. And, and I'm sure they did that to Paul and they did it to Todd whenever they saw those guys. But for them to come up to me and tell me those things, it was really great. And so everybody who came up to me, they would say, I don't know your podcast, but now I'm going to listen. And that's why I say we have new people on board this week. And to all of those people, there had to be 50 who came up to me over the course of three days. And I would say to them, hey, uh, so you don't listen to the show? And they'd say, I really don't. I'm sorry. I have so many to listen to. And I said, that's fine. They go, but I'm going to listen now. I said, well, that's cool. Let me tell you something. If you send me an email, I will send you a download set free of charge. They go, what do you mean? And I go, I have all seven years catalog, obviously, and we sell them. I said, but you can pick a year. If you want pick year one to hear where it all started or if you want year seven or six or three, I go, tell me which one you want and I'll send it to you because I want, that's the whole point. It's my calling card. And I think if you listen, you'll go, fuck, I need to keep listening. They go, well, I'm going to totally jump in, but I'll definitely send you an email. I said, that's great. I go, that's all I want to do because I want, I'm just all about right now. Dude, I'd love to monetize. I'd love to do all that kind of shit. But right now I just want to get people fucking listening because the more people that listen, well, then maybe I can guest on other shows and the ball gets rolling fucking downhill. So I said to all of them, just send me an email and I'll go ahead and send you a download set. They go, that's really amazing. And I said, yeah, and also you can subscribe on iTunes. Obviously, the re, you know recent episodes, we keep the top five, the last five up, and, and then there'll be this week's show, and we'll probably talk about Podfest, but please jump on board. And I'd shake their hands and enthusiastically thank them, and they'd say, oh my God, you're so great. I said, thank you. And then I came home on a Friday night, and I was floating, and then Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday, and today is Wednesday, so that's about six days later, maybe five days later, and uh, not one fucking person has written me to get the free <laughs> download set. Not one. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> and I scrambled to my email every day like it's Christmas fucking morning. And I'm like, who's the new fan? Who's the new guy? Who can I get on board? Absolutely nobody. So I may be saying that we've got a ton of new listeners now, but we might have fuck all. We, have, we might have lost listeners for fuck's sake. I have no idea. All I know is these people came up to me in a hallway and felt enough to press the flesh. And when I offered them something free, they immediately ran the fuck away from me as far as they possibly could. And this is a group of people who consume free every fucking day. And they were like, you know, you were intense and you were great in that movie. And maybe they just went, whoa, that's a lot of free intensity. I don't think I can fucking handle that. Because you got to figure what, if I send you a download set of me, you open it up and it just punches you in the face out of the fucking computer screen? Possible. Really? Seriously? What's the only thing you could be thinking? I offered you a free fucking year, motherfucker. You were new. You wanted to come on board. And I said, here's a free year. And you all looked at me wide at and went, why the fuck are you doing that? I'm like, so you'll get on board. You know why? Because I'm fucking, it's, I'm just, I'm behind a fucking Circle K by a dumpster handing out envelopes of me. I just want to fucking get you involved. You need to fucking sit down and put your earbuds in and take the fucking mic spike. That's what you need to goddamn do. Take the mic spike and you'll be hooked and you'll keep coming up to me scratching your fucking ears like it's the fucking center of your arm because that's where your track marks are. I'm leaving track marks in your fucking head, new people, and you're fucking on board and how can you fucking pass up free product? I'm offering free product, not just five hits of free product. I'll send you 52 hits of free product. Send me a fucking email and I'll send it to you. You pick the year. I don't give a fuck because they're all equally strong and they're all fucking cut exactly the way they should be. No fucking baby laxative in this goddamn show. <laughs> This is high quality medical grade fucking comedy and I will hit you right in all of your ear veins with it if you fucking just send me an email, motherfucker. You were on board. You came up to me in a dark hallway and said, hey man, you're great. Well, fucking prove it and send me an email and I'll show you how fucking great I am and send you a pile of me in a fucking instant and you'll have it and you'll download it and you'll take the mic spike, motherfucker. That's all you need to do is take me and put me in your skip the closing music. I say people love your closing music, so let's prove it to them. If you've listened this far, write me at heymexilisten at gmail.com and we'll send you a 40-year-old boy hearing commemorative Facebook profile picture that you better fucking put up, you dick. Sorry about the dick thing, 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 
thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing, thing. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. I don't want you to miss any of that brilliance. <laughs> hey, everybody. Do you have a Doug in your life, or do you wish you had a Doug in your life? Either way, you should check out Wide World of Dougs, the show where comedians Doug Benson, that's me, and Doug Mellard get together to discuss the name Doug and lots of other things with Dougs and non Dougs. We don't discriminate. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. Got it.